gotta, gotta have heart. What a fucking game. The New York Knicks. Oh, man. I guess. The New York Knickerbockers, your second seeded New York Knickerbockers, where for a second there in the first quarter, it looked like maybe the second seeded New York Knickerbockers shouldn't have wanted any part of being the second seeded New York Knickerbockers. Just, I'm not going to say escaped game one because they didn't escape. Although there was some escape like qualities to that victory. Took game one from the clutches of the Philadelphia 76ers, 111 to 104, in a game they absolutely needed to win. And I know if they had lost this game, I would have found a way to come on here and rationalize it, <clears throat> say all hope is not lost. And I would have been lying through my goddamn teeth because you retook momentum in a game where you absolutely had none of it, captured it, were kind of in control, and then absolutely frittered it away in a third quarter that we will discuss because it was quite unpleasant. And I, I there was a, so much from this game that is going to set the tone for the rest of the series. But to have Embiid go out for those couple of minutes and then to have Embiid come back, and then we're going to talk about how he looked when he come back. When he came back, I, I was not the same guy as he was in the first quarter, but he was pretty damn good. Um, but just to be that close in your own building, I didn't think they could lose the game. I, once they got to a certain point, I did not think that they could lose this game and win this series. And yes, I realize I am saying that about a game in which Jalen Brunson took 26 shots and made eight. Give him credit. 22 points, found a way to get 22 points, 22 points, seven assists, seven rebounds, like found ways to help his team. You will not see Jalen Brunson have a worse offensive basketball game than he just had. Maybe I maybe that's a step too far. You won't see Jalen Brunson have a worse shooting game than he just had. Um, and again, we're going to talk about all of this stuff as the night goes on and and full coverage between now and game two and, and as the series goes on. I thought the Sixers did some really nice things against Jalen Brunson. I thought Jalen Brunson also just missed a lot of shots that he normally makes. And... Maybe they got in his head a little bit by the end of this game because he was he was getting to his spots and they just weren't going down. That being said, when they absolutely needed a bucket from him um, late there uh, to make it 98 92, he came through. But this game, uh, despite the fact that I wore my my JV shirt today, this game is not about Jalen Brunson. Well, actually, you know what? I, I stand corrected. This game is about Jalen Brunson. It's all about Jalen Brunson. And here's why. You could win regular season games when your best player is not at his best. It's possible. We've seen it. We saw the Knicks win a, a game this season when Jalen Brunson went out after 47 seconds, and they found a way. Playoff basketball is something different. And in particular, playoff basketball is something different when you are facing um, one guy who was on track to win MVP and came out looking like the MVP and even after he got hurt, had quite a few plays there in this game where he looked like the presumptive MVP. And then his sidekick, and yes, I'm I, that's big air quotes because Tyrese Maxey didn't look anything like a sidekick tonight. I know it took him 26 shots to get his 33 points, but he was having his way with this Knicks defense, specifically when Embiid was in the game. That's the key. It's when those two are on the court at the same time that it activates Maxi and it makes Joel Embiid basically unguardable. Something happened to Joel Embiid in the fourth quarter of this game, and it was an injury, and I don't, I don't think it was fatigue. It was Mitchell Robinson, and we're going to talk about him. We're going to talk about all of these guys because the reason this was a Jalen Brunson game is because you are not supposed to win a game if you are the New York Knicks. I don't care 
how loud the building is. I don't care how much energy was in Madison Square Garden before the start of this game and throughout many parts of this game. You are not supposed to win a game where Jalen Brunson shoots like that and the two best players on the other team play like that. And yet they did. And how did they do that? Because every other player on the court, forget chipped in, forget chipped in, played like this was game seven of the NBA finals and came up massive. Josh Hart will be the story of this game. As he should be. There is no player like Josh Hart in the NBA. Um, he is one of one. And I don't just say that because he is six foot four and he grabs rebounds that he has absolutely no business getting ever in a million years. Um, he is one of one because nobody approaches the game quite like him, where he says, you know what? Not the most athletic guy in the world. I'm not the most skilled guy in the world, but I will outwork you. It doesn't matter if you are my height, if you are six inches taller than me, if you're the size of Joel Embiid. I will outwork you, and I will outwork you in minute one, and I will outwork you in minute 24, and I will outwork you in minute 48. It doesn't matter if in minute 48 I have played 42 of the previous 47 minutes or 41 of the previous 47 because he finished with 42, including, by the way, the entire second half of this game. Josh Hart's one one and the fact that he had as many three-pointers in the fourth quarter of this game as he had in any other game this season shows you what he's made of, and it shows you why he is the heart and soul of this team, and it shows you why this team wouldn't be this team without him for as much shit as he catches from a lot of people. Um, and he does catch a lot of shit from a lot of people. But it wasn't just Josh Hart. And anybody who watched this game knows damn well it wasn't just Josh Hart. I'm not sure where I want to go to next because for as much as this is, it's going to go down to the Josh Hart game. There are two players who I think every Nick fan will come away from this game because Josh Hart is three threes in the fourth quarter are not a given, but Josh Hart's kind of a given. But the two guys who made the difference in this game, arguably a bigger difference than Josh Hart are two players who we had every reason to have questions about coming into this postseason for vastly different reasons. One of them was Mitchell Robinson. And Mitchell Robinson, as I'm happy they said it on the broadcast, I think it was Breen that said it, maybe it was one of uh, one of Doris or JJ. Somebody definitely pointed out, he was on, I think it was Breen, he was on his way to having an all-defense season, uh, to making an all-defense team when he got hurt. And since he came back, he's had flashes. He's had flashes, but flashes aren't going to cut it against Joel Embiid looking like Joel Embiid came out looking tonight. And, boy, shows what shows what uh, Smarty Pants me knows because all I could think of coming into the series was, oh, my God, how many how many minutes could we get out of Isaiah Hartenstein? Can we push Isaiah Hartenstein to, like, 32 minutes, you know? And is there is there going to be a role maybe for Pesher Sachua? Like, if Mitch just isn't – if he's not cutting it and he looks like he's looked for the majority of the time since he came back from this injury a few weeks ago, maybe, I don't know, maybe Precious was switching and maybe a little bit more playmaking. Maybe he gives us a better option. Yeah. Keep listening to what I say. Really hitting the, hitting the bullseye on that one because Isaiah Hardenstein, 18 minutes in this game. Precious Achua, obviously zero minutes in this game. And Mitchell Robinson in the most minutes he has played since he came back from injury, 30 absolutely massive 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 minutes the stat line may not really do it justice seven offensive rebounds pretty good right pretty good we've seen him have games with more four blocks eight points two big free throws um his defense on Joel Embiid in the fourth quarter of this game was the stuff that legends are made of and i know it's only game 1 and i guarantee you i guarantee you Joel Embiid is going to get his before this series is over and probably more than once because that dude is a freaking beast. I know everybody hates him right now because he pushed jo jo uh, Jalen Brunson into the backcourt. What we saw from Joel Embiid tonight, that's a warrior. And that's a guy that any fan base would be crazy not to 
uh, praise and one on their team. I know he didn't make, you know, some of those shots in the fourth quarter. The dude, the for him to come back out there and do what he did was like, what else can you possibly want? And Mitchell Robinson went toe to toe with him, to as much as anyone can. Mitchell Robinson went toe to toe, and between that and the offensive rebounding and the putbacks and the second opportunities, I, I lost track of how many times I wrote down Mitchell Robinson's name um, as I was uh, going through, as I was taking notes during this fourth quarter. Um, multiple massive offensive rebounds, a putback, blocked a Paul Reed three. Paul Reed, you think you might, might want to keep your fucking mouth shut? Maybe? Think you maybe learned your lesson after this game? Did nothing. Mitch Robinson swatted him out of bounds. And then what I thought, maybe m my favorite play of the game, non, non Josh Hart three pointer division. <clears throat> Mitch Robinson battling for that jump ball or j battling for that rebound. And I know Embiid ended up winning it and, and you know, it was that was a funny tip situation, but it didn't matter. That's that's laying everything out there. And I said before the series, and I'll say again, win or lose against Philadelphia, I, I would find it hard to to be up to be too upset. I mean, I mean, I'd be upset, but like to be down on this team, to be angry with this team, or upset or annoyed with this team if they just did it like they've been doing it all season. And tonight. They somehow took what they did all season and they exceeded it. Um, with the exception of Jalen Brunson, who had one of the worst nights you'll ever gonna see him him have. Um, so that's Mitch. And then the other guy, boy, I, I kind of there's a part of me that wants to pull up my my newsletter <clears throat> that I wrote on Friday. Um when I uh I forget what exactly I said. But it was something to the effect of, boy, Deuce of Pride. He has one more field goal in the uh in the in the in his playoff career than than me and you do. Are we sure we could, we could trust Deuce of Pride to to like have the courage to take the threes that the Sixers are gonna give him, let alone make the threes that the Sixers are gonna give him? Like, is he going to get gun shy? Is he going to be able to, like, you know, if he has an opportunity to run the offense, is he going to be able to, you know, competently, like, direct things if, if the ball isn't in Jalen Brunson's hand? Again, talk about hitting bullseyes. Do suit pride. This is a, this, this is, I, I'm sorry. I've never seen this number, this sort of dis disparity before in my life. Deucey Pride played 28 minutes in this game. He was played 28 minutes in this game in a game they won by seven points. They didn't win by 17. They didn't win by 27. They won by seven points. And in Deucey Pride's 28 minutes, he was a plus 37. And there is nothing about that number that is a misnomer in the slightest. Because for as much as Deuce of Pride's 21 points and his 7 of 20, uh, 12 from the field and his 5 of 7 from deep, including hitting his first four, and oh my lord, the momentum of those threes, one after another after another after another, like, because the Knicks, like, they were, look, they were never dead in the water, to be very clear. Like, they were, like these Knicks are never out of it. You know they're going to come back. But the reason they come back in these games is because of Someone stepping up, and often it is a person stepping up, and it is in, it's that person inspiring the collective of individuals around them. And for as much as Joel Embiid coming back on the court in the third quarter inspired his teammates, I thought Deuce Pride's uh, play went, from the moment he checked into the game in the first half inspired his teammates. Um, he came in and was part of a lineup: Mitchell Robinson, Boyan Bogdanovich. Um, OG Ananobi and Jalen Brunson, that lineup had played zero minutes together, zero zip, nada before this game. And Tibbs ran with it because why wouldn't you? Um, and they, and they caught a flow and, um, it was just, it was, it was the difference in the game. That second quarter was the difference in the game because if they don't go up there in the second quarter I, and 
like Philly comes out and does what they did in the third quarter. I, I don't know if the Knicks have, I don't, I don't, I just, I don't think they have enough to, to push it back. So, and then of course, Deuce hit a, a massive three uh, to make it 91 86. Um, let's, let's not forget that. Um, so yeah, Mitch and Deuce, but they weren't the only heroes, obviously. And, and j- just like Josh Hart wasn't the only hero. Um, OJ Ananobi, obviously the, the biggest, moment for him was the made three that I, the, the hard three was really sealed it. Cause after the, the, uh, after the OG three, Lowry hit a three to, to bring it back within four, like Philly could have won the game still at that point without any kind of craziness happening. Even so that OG three, um, not a corner three and above the break three. Um, but, but that buries what I think was a, by the way, by the way, the streak is over. I know it's a regular season streak, but OJ and Obi was a negative in this game. It's the first time he's been a negative in a game as a Nick, and they still won, so that's a good sign. Um, you know, he had one steal. He had, he had no blocks. I thought OG defensively, I, I, I thought he was he was every bit the impact player, even though he didn't – there was an, the splash plays, and even though, there, you know, maybe not a lot of highlights, he was absolutely impacting what Philadelphia did and was able to do. <clears throat> and I thought um, just a really, really solid game from OG Ananobi. And the only other guy that I want to mention, and you know where I'm going to finish this off with, is Boyan Bogdanovich. And again, you need all of these guys if you're going to overcome a JB game like that and an Embiid and a, and a Maxi game like that. Boyan Bogdanovich, talk about saving his best for when it counts. Second to Deuce, plus 27 in 25 minutes. He was only 4-12 from the field, but anybody watching this game knows um, the impact of his makes were massive. Finished with 13 points. How about seven big rebounds from Boyan Bogdanovich? Again, you don't do what you did tonight if you're the Knicks without contributions from everyone. You don't out-rebound the Philadelphia 76ers. Again, it's like we're looking at some fake numbers here. It's like the Brunson shooting line was a fake number. The Deuce plus minus line was a fake number. Here's another one that looks like a fake number. On a team with Joel Embiid on it and a team that runs out oftentimes lineups where like four players at once are over six foot seven or six foot seven or higher, this Philadelphia 76ers got out rebounded 55 to 31. That is some Thibodeau shit right there. And yes, part of it is this is a team full of Thibodeau players, but that's some Tom Thibodeau shit right there. A descendant of Jeff Van Gundy, a descendant of Pat Riley, no rebounds, no rings. 55 to 33, including my Lord, 23 to 9 on the offensive glass. You want to tell me that this next team isn't just like built to outwork their opponent. They were not the better team tonight. Like in terms of the things that often decide playoff games, like how good are the best players playing? Like who's making more shots? The Knicks won this game despite shooting 39.6% from the field. 44.4% from for Philadelphia. And I know the Knicks made up for it with a lot of big threes. They shot 45.7% from three. But you know what? Credit to them for taking them and credit to them for making them. But they got nothing done inside the arc. The free throw uh, at the end of the day, 28 for the Knicks, 22 for Philly. I thought I didn't have any problem with the whistle. I know fans were booing Joel at the end there. Like he's been getting those calls his whole life. He's going to get those calls all series long. I I don't I don't mind them. Um, This was a want it game. This was a want it more game. It's what it is. One team wanted it more than the other team. And that's no shade against the Philadelphia 76ers, who I thought came in. And I mean, when you want to talk about took it to the Knicks in the first quarter there. Absolutely took it to the Knicks. And I think the Knicks, you know, I want to save some of the some of the actual nitty gritty stuff for as we go through the, the live stream. But I thought. Again. It's it's all about the head of the snake, right? So if you can make Jalen Brunson uncomfortable, and again, we could talk about like how good were his quality of shots? Were they were they acceptable? Were they mediocre? Were they subpar? Um, what the Knicks were doing to get him looks, I thought was as good of as anything as they could do to get him looks. Um, 
But there's no question that Philadelphia made him uncomfortable. And I think when you make Jalen Brunson uncomfortable, which they did, and they succeeded at doing, honestly, almost all the way through the game, I th- it just throws everything else off. And I thought when you saw the Knicks come out there in the first quarter and they went down by whatever they went down by, I think 10 or 12 points at one point, <clears throat> it was just because they were kind of all out of sorts. And the other reason they were kind of all out of sorts is, is Joel Embiid. And you saw that manifest itself throughout the entire game where even though Embiid on a couple of possessions either couldn't grab a defensive rebound or couldn't contest, you know, Mitchell Robinson pulling one down and, and getting it back up. He was absolutely remained uh, an intimidating force in, in the Knicks heads when Knicks, any Nick almost uh, except Mitch got anywhere close to the rim. So like the Sixers did some real good stuff uh, before game one. I thought Embiid's health was, I mean, far and away goes without saying the most important factor in the series after game one, I still think Embiid's health is going to be far and away the most important factor in the series because the guy that we saw in the first quarter, man, can't stop that dude. And you can't stop a team that he's on because when you put him on the floor with Maxi, it's basically like, all right, pray three point shooters miss. And let's try to really make hay in the minutes he's off the court. And even then, it's it's just so tough. Like, there's a reason their net rating was what it was with him. There's a reason the record was what it was with him. There's a reason the net rating with the two of those guys on the floor at the same time. Like, this series is not over. I should go with that saying. This series is not over. Had to have game one. Had to have game one. Series is not over. It's a long way from over. They will fight. I, I mean, we'll see how Embiid's knee holds up. <clears throat> um. I'm just looking at a quote from Tibbs. This is uh, courtesy SNY. Uh, oh, actually, no. Sorry, this is from Nick Nurse. Give them credit. We're probably okay with some of those shots, but they hit them. Um, yeah, I mean, Nick Nurse tonight, like, how do you go to sleep if you're Nick Nurse? Like, you you, you coached a great game. Your defensive game plan worked. For all, I mean, it should have worked. You got, the, you, you got Josh Hart taken three after three after three after three, and Josh Hart decided to have the best shooting night of uh of his season he saved it for when it mattered the most what do you finish with four of eight four of eight from downtown my goodness and deuce five of seven so yeah i mean nick nurse you gotta live with it because like what else are you gonna do you did what you could do and you lost um thankfully we don't have to live in that reality right now who man what a fucking game what a win so massive. I don't know what this team's going to do from here. I don't know how they're going to even do the rest of the series, but can't be proud of a basketball team. Can't. It's not possible. Cannot be proud of a team than what, what we are of, of these Knicks. And that is the part that isn't surprising in the least because they've been doing it all season long. It's who they are. It's what they're about. It's what gets him out of bed in the morning. Okay. Uh, I think on that note, let's move on. We have a couple of segments here. Um, Starting with the player of the game. Yes, a new segment presented by our friends at Autograph. So here's what we want you to do. You're going to go download the Autograph app. All you have to do is go into wherever you get your apps, um, search for autograph. Um, I'm pretty sure the the a link will be in the sh- description of this episode. Uh, and use code KFS. And if you do that, you're you're and just if you spend some time on the autograph app, you're going to get rewarded for your Knicks fandom. Seriously, you go on there, you read one of my newsletters, you listen to one of our pods, read some of the great content that other content creators put out about the Knicks or about any team. You're going to get credit for all of it. And the more credit you get, the more stuff you win. You get uh, win discounted tickets, all kinds of great stuff. It is a really revolutionary app that we're happy to partner with um, for uh, this playoff run. So, again, player of the game presented by Autograph. Do I get too cute here? What even is getting too cute? Like, there are three just absolute. Incredible candidates. 
And I, I and like I'm real I'm really genuinely torn. I could give it to any one of these three guys, and I I oh man. I'm struggling. Can you tell I'm struggling? Uh I'm gonna go Josh Hart. And if you're going to yell and scream and say, how in God's name could you not pick Deuce McBride or how in God's name could you pick not pick Mr. Robinson, I don't, I don't blame you one bit. Truly, I don't blame you one bit. I think those guys, I think Mitchell Robinson did the most with the toughest job tonight. I think Deuce McBride was the best player of the game, which I guess is the name of this. Is It is the player of the game. And yet, it would be tough for me to give the player of the game to a player that like that to, to someone other than Hart because I do think that he was most responsible for them at the end of the day after everything was said and done for them coming out with the W. Um, with those four made threes with 22 points and with 13 freaking rebounds, including four on the offensive glass um, to go with a couple of assists to steal like really tough decision. Incredibly tough decisions for our first player of the game presented by autograph, but I'm gonna go with Hart. Feel free to yell and scream at me if you want. I will take no offense. All right, next up, we are going to our out of town scoreboard playoff out of town scoreboard presented by T Squared Social. Um, shout out to everybody who was at the KFS watch party. <clears throat> um Tonight at T Squared Social, down the block from uh, Grand Central Station, where if you go in and you tell them KFS sent you, you will get a free draft beer. You could also go to T Squared Social.com to learn about club memberships, trivia nights. Who doesn't love a good trivia night? Sports leagues, and much more. So, again, shout out to the watch party. Um, here is our out of town scoreboard, again, presented by T Squared Social. Um, Okay, Cavaliers in what was a uh, not a uh, not the most aesthetically pleasing game earlier today. Beat the Magic 97 to 83. Donovan Mitchell had a really nice game. The uh, Orlando Magic, I saw someone uh, tweeted out, <clears throat> I believe it was Nate Duncan, that during the relevant portion of the game, before things really got out of hand, the Magic uh, were scoring 50 points per 100 possessions, uh, which is not uh, a, exactly a recipe for success. Uh, that said, I thought the Magic, like, you know, other than not being able to make anything from the field, I thought they, like, showed up. You know, they 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 made Cleveland's life difficult. They just couldn't do anything with it. And I'll be curious to see where that series goes from here. Um, I picked Cleveland, so, you know, there's that. And then the Timberwolves in a statement, in an absolute statement, and this game was close. It was at least, you know, around 10 points for a lot of the game until the Timberwolves and Anthony Edwards in particular absolutely ran away with this thing, ended up beating Phoenix 120 to 95. Um, the Suns, uh, you, you figured the Suns were going to have some answers against Minnesota's defense, the double bigs with all of their shooting, and like, they did for a while, and then they just kind of ran out of gas because they couldn't stop Minnesota. And Minnesota, I mean, Nikhil Alexander-Walker was up for the challenge. Uh, Minnesota just played a really strong game offensively in particular and defensively. They played, I mean, they just, they just played an awesome game. They won by 25 points. And now, um, currently going on, the Lakers up 45-37 to 37 on the second-seeded Nuggets. So we'll see how that game turns out. I imagine we will be on for a while, so maybe I will have a final score to report at some point. And I think that is all she wrote. My understanding is there was a, at least one super chat from before the game. So we got Kev. Uh, Kev Words is on the ones and twos tonight. I'm going to ask him to let me know um, how many super chats were from either before the game or from before the game is over. Although maybe I'll be able to figure it out as we go along. But I think this first super chat was from like many hours before the game. So we will get things started as I take a sip of my wine. <clears throat> oh, this is only one before the game started from 1.29 p.m. Here we go. Knicks fan patrol. <laughs> Let's fucking go. <laughs> he was excited. He was excited uh, many hours before tip off at 1.29 p.m. Um, what was I doing? I was watching. 
I, I was actually watching the game at home, although I was watching parts of both games from uh, on my phone from the park because I was alone with my youngest daughter for most of the day. Uh, thanks, Knicks Fan Patrol, for getting us started off. Okay. Onwards and upwards. <clears throat> oh, and then uh, another one from Knicks Fan Patrol. Deuce! Dolan, for fuck's sake, gives the fans some T-shirts. Did, did they not give out t-shirts? I don't I don't really care about that. Sorry, Knicks Fan Patrol. Oh, Kev says he thought that he thought they did. I have no idea. Uh thanks, Knicks Fan Patrol. Again. Robert W. Cross, I knew it was coming soon. It's your boy John, my two favorite Knicks, Ice McBride and Money Mitch. You know, I'm happy for you, Robert. And I mean this genuinely. I I I shit I shit thee not. Because you are the best kind of fan in that you aren't you don't want a team full of mercenaries <clears throat> you don't want like you want homegrown even if they're not homegrown stars you want your homegrown players to lead the charge and how fitting was it that again i i know i gave the player of the game to josh hart but the two nicks that i think for any nick fan worth their salt will define this game are two guys who this team drafted and developed. And, the and you know, the last two guys on the roster that they drafted and developed. And I'm going to say it's, it's especially, it's especially meaning, hashtag meaningful. For Mitch, I, I know I wrote about this earlier. I'll, I'll say it again because I just think it's, it's kind of wild. <clears throat> like, putting aside all-star level players because it's you know you would you would expect all-star type players to stay on a team for an extended period of time like Steph Curry, like Nikola Jokic, like all those sorts of all those sorts of guys. Mitchell Robinson has now spent six full regular seasons with the Knicks. There are only four players in the entire NBA, five if you count Jonathan Isaac, but Jonathan Isaac missed two full seasons. Um, who have been with their teams for longer than Mitchell Robinson and have never made an all-star team. Uh, Miles Turner and Kevon Looney have both been with their teams for nine seasons. We'll see if Kevon Looney's back on Golden State. Jamal Murray, who should have been an all-star at some point, he's been with the team, Denver Nuggets, for eight seasons. And then Maxi Kleber, who's been with the Dallas Mavericks for seven seasons. And then there's Mitch, who's tied with Anthony Simons and, and Duncan Robinson. Um <clears throat> He has been here since the dark times. And as for Deuce, I mean, you again, if you saw this coming, I mean, fuck, if you saw this coming, go play, stop listening to me and go play fucking Lotto. And then uh, maybe don't actually, no, don't super chat it. D D DM me, whatever the numbers that you picked are, please. If you saw this coming, this. But if you, I mean, if you just believed in him as a guy who would like figure it out on offense and like the defense would be enough to carry the day until that point, take a take a bow, run a victory lap, do take do a shot, do whatever you're gonna do, um, because I I I had real doubts. I'm just being upfront. I had real doubts, even in the middle of the season. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, it's uh, it's got to be fun for you. Robert, it's got to be fun for you. Okay. Thanks, Robert. Sergio Acosta, very generous uh, super chat, Sergio. Halftime. Oh, wow. We're still in the middle of the game. Okay. Sucks and B got hurt, but we were up before he went down. We were. Um, Obi, Grimes, and IQ were the guys we loved, but it was always Deuce. He's a dog. Win or lose, up 12 with Bronson, not playing great. Let's go, Knicks. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people love RJ. Like, don't don't forget about RJ there. I mean, you know, I'm, you know, I, I was the biggest RJ fan, but RJ Barrett, RJ Barrett was a massive part of this team, and um, so it was quickly and 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 you know, Ob and and Grimes a little bit less so, but like, they were all part of the journey. If you're telling me that Deuce is the one who like, it's the most fitting that he's the one who's still here. I, I, I'm agreeing with you, and I, and I, 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 please don't let any, please don't anybody let that be, 
take that as a as a as a putting down of the other the other guys. Because I thought all those guys were like Nick's like true like even Obi, who like you know wasn't the best on defense. Like that dude gave a shit. Like all those guys cared, all those guys wanted it. Like the Grimes possession where he was on one leg against Jimmy Butler in the playoffs last year. Like that's you're never gonna have a better moment than that in terms of like wanting it and being like a true, a true like gritty pro. But Deuce is Deuce just he eats, breathes, sleeps this stuff. So incredible for him to have this game one moment. Thanks, Sergio. Knicks fan patrol with another one. Respectfully, Embiid fucked around and found out. All right. I, I look, I, I get it. I get what you're saying. And but to Embiid's credit, he was out there to start the third quarter. And I didn't think he would be. I thought he was done for the game. I'm just gonna I'm gonna be honest. I thought he was done for the game. I mean, I was already thinking, like, oh shit, is he gonna play in game two? But he came back. And he looked pretty good. He didn't look the same. Didn't look the same, especially on defense. For as much as the Knicks didn't want to challenge him at the rim, that was the other big development. They put him in deep drop. I mean, Brunson got him once for a three. And I, I, I did think it it kind of, maybe kind of a little bit, sort of opened things up for the Knicks when they saw that Embiid, you know, at least wasn't coming out as much. But, like, what they score? They scored 111 points. <clears throat> And after scoring 58 in the first, so they scored 58 in the first half, 53 in the second half. For so, for as much as Embiid was may have been limited, like the Knicks actually scored less in the second half. Like, I, I, it's, it's gonna be tough moving forward with him out there. Thanks, Knicks fan patrol. Dylan DeAndrea, what's going on, Dylan? So, how about those non Brunson minutes? The deuce is loose and juiced. I feel like uh, I have to quote one of my um, probably my favorite my favorite basketball podcast if I'm being honest, and that's the Hoop Collective with Brian Winhorst and and uh, the two the two Tims. And Brian is the last few episodes <clears throat> has reminded everybody that throw the regular season out the door, and he would even catch himself because he'd be refer he'd refer to the regular season. And they'd be like, I know I said the regular season doesn't mean anything. Crazy shit happens in the playoffs. Like, guys have unexpected bad games. Like, think back to three years ago. Who of who among us could have ever fathomed after Julius Randle owned Atlanta all season long that he was going to come out and have a series that would make us question whether they sh he should, like, be on the team anymore, you know? And then, like, Emmanuel quickly. Like, in so many ways, last season was like kind of defined by quickly the regular season, at least as almost as much as Brunson. It really was. And, you know, and, and Randall obviously, but like quickly is the guy, like I think so many of us, so many Nick fans will remember from that season. And then we got to the playoffs and like, just didn't have it. You know, it just wasn't there. Um, <clears throat> Mitchell Robinson, best player against Cleveland, nothing against Miami. Like, and again, we're, no one's blaming, these guys for any of us, just like I'm not going to sit here and blame Jalen Brunson for having a, a, a really bad shooting night, but it just goes to show you, 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 you go into series and you have all these givens like, well, Jalen Brunson is going to do this. And you know, Dante not that is going to do that. And so, so on and so forth. By the way, I didn't mention DiVincenzo. His three. Well, the Sixers were pouring it on there in the third quarter, his three to stop the bleeding a little bit. And I know the Sixers continued their run after that three. I thought that was a, Big three to stem the tide just a little bit for momentum, um, but like it, we didn't, we didn't. David Chenzo didn't have the game we expected him to play, and I think Tibbs admitted that David Chenzo only played um, played twenty four minutes. It was a, what was he a minus minus twenty three in twenty four minutes? So you know, uh, but yeah, the deuce was loose and he was juiced. After all, we could all we could think about was how are they going to survive the number on some minutes? Thanks, Dylan. Sergio Acosta, this is New York. <laughs> Sparta. I haven't seen that movie in a hot minute. Uh, what's his? I'm forgetting the director's name. Snyder, Zack Snyder. <clears throat> I know Snyder's kind of fallen out of favor, but that that's a that's a badass movie. Thank you, Sergio. 
As the Nuggets are on a 10-0 run, they're only down by two now. Robert W. Cross with another one. First time, long time. It's your boy, John. Money Mitch. Remember the name. I I told you they're in the game. Or maybe it was right before the game. No, I think I said it right before the game. If Mitch, if Mitch was going to look like Mitch, massive. I mean, you, you cannot, not as big as Embiid looking like Embiid, which, again, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But I think now that Mitch has come out, and done this, I think you can feel confident that this is the version of Mitchell Robinson that we will see moving forward in the playoffs. I'm not saying he's going to have, you know, seven offensive rebounds every time he plays and and play. Like, again, you're going to need everybody against Embiid. Tonight, it was not Hardenstein's night against Embiid. It was Mitch's night against Embiid. There will be nights of series where it's going to be Hardenstein's night. But they don't win the game without Mitchell Robinson. In no uncertain terms, they don't win the game without Mitchell Robinson. And you have not been able to say that. I think maybe, maybe you could have said that in one game since he's been back. Maybe. Thanks, Robert. Ryan Huang, what's going on, Ryan? Give Josh Hart the keys to the fucking city and give Deuce and Mitch some mini keys or something. <laughs> I like that. Nobody's scoring on Deuce OG Mitch. Let's fucking go. Um, yeah, so the, the 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 death lineup, as it were, seemed to be in this game the four key figures, the three you just mentioned, Deuce, OG, and Mitch. Like the I will OG's always gonna be out there. Like, and and you know Brunson's always gonna be out there. Like th- those are the two guys that are gonna that just have the total trust of Thibodeau and like right behind them, right behind them is Josh Hart. Is there a world where Josh Hart is just like not looking like Josh Hart in a game, despite what he did tonight. And Tibbs maybe gives him a a little bit longer stint on the bench. Sure. But the reason you can't really do that with Josh Hart is because tonight for, I don't know, uh, maybe like almost through much of the third quarter. Josh Hart was kind of having one of those nights where it's like, oh, man, should Josh Hart be on the court? Like, there was a point in time late in the third quarter where I was, like, really thinking to myself, man, they're not guarding him at all. He's made one three. I think he was one for maybe one for five at the time. Um, And I was like, man, and it's like, not that he was like a zero on offense, but, and he certainly wasn't a zero in the game. He was doing all a lot of the usual Josh Hart spit, but stuff, but specifically on offense, I thought that there was a little he wasn't quite the guy that we've seen him be when he's at his when he's at his best, like like driving and making passes and and making those little, you know, 12, 14 foot fadeaways and and really being a like everything that Josh Hart's capable of being late third quarter. I didn't think we were really seeing that version of Josh Hart. And then but you leave him in because you th- those are he's a foxhole guy. He's a foxhole guy. Come hell or high water, you want him in your foxhole. So, JB, OG, Josh, and then the other two, Mitch and and Deuce. That was the lineup. And I meant to look it up before. And I'm going to... So, I said earlier, Mitch, OG, Deuce, Jalen, and Bogey had not played any minutes together this season. If we swap out Bogey for Hart, which, again, was the lineup that closed the game... That lineup this season had played a grand total before tonight of eight possessions with a 50 offensive rating. (laughs) Speaking of 50 offensive ratings. So it just goes to show, again, the playoffs are a time when you have to be ready, willing, and able to adjust to what the situation gives you. And they did that tonight. Thanks, Ryan. Will Oliver, what's going on, Will? They picked up Brunson like he did for them all year. That's my favorite comment of the night so far. Absolutely. They they owed him. They owe him a few because he saved their bacon a lot of times. Like, I would I bet my mortgage that Jalen Brunson is going to come out and have a much better game too? I don't, I don't know about that, but I, I would think about it. I would think about 
that he's going to now he's going to need to because, again, Josh Hart is not going to hit four threes probably again in a game in this series. And and by the way, if he doesn't, how do the Knicks do the Knicks adjust or do they just keep telling him, like, look, fire, you're firing away, fire away and we'll deal with the consequences. So what if the next game instead of going four for eight, he goes two for eight, you know, and how do the Knicks deal with that? No. If Brunson has a big time game, the difference of him hitting four threes versus one of two threes, maybe not, maybe not a big deal. I wonder, I wonder if we can't look at tonight and say the most valuable thing that Josh Hart was he took them, like he attempted them. I'm I'm inclined to say no because I think the Sixers are going to look at what happened tonight and they're going to be like, we lost because of a Black Swan event. Josh Hart hitting four of eight threes, including three in the fourth quarter. We're going to stick with that strategy because we like what it allows us to do, which is to make Jalen Brunson's life difficult. So Jalen Brunson is going to need to be better. He is absolutely going to need to be better. Um, Especially since, like, I'm not sure how many of these other guys you could ask to be better. You can't ask Deuce to be better. You can't ask Mitch to be better. You can't ask... Honestly, I'm not really sure how you could ask OG to be much. I thought OG played a really good game. Um, and you can't ask Hart to be better. Bogey, maybe he's a little bit better. Dante, but again, it's like you only could have five guys on the court. So like Dante not having the be- biggest game in the world tonight wasn't that huge of a deal because there were there were other guys ready to step in for him. Um, you know, Hardenstein, you know, took some of the floaters that he usually makes. He didn't make him tonight. Like he'll be a little bit better, but like they need Brun- they just need Brunson to be better. They just need Brunson to be better, especially since the Sixers, again, didn't have a great night from three tonight. That'll rebound at some point. Thanks, Will. Busy! What's going on, Busy? This has been the Knicks all year. Yep. A role player elevating their game, doing things we never thought they could. Get, they could. Game one down. I'm not, I don't want to read the last part. There's three broom emojis with loading next to it uh i have as will shock nobody i have way 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 too much respect for the philadelphia 76ers to think that this is going to be a sweep or anything close to it um massive game i think we're we may look back on this game as the game that decided the series i still think this is gonna be a long series i think the sixers are good if 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 Embiid again, if Embiid can make it through, and he might not make it through. He might not make it through. We don't we just we we just don't know. We just don't know. Thank you, Busy. <clears throat> Hush Zoo, what's going on, Hush? <clears throat> Was that the ledge of my window? <laughs> Josh Hart and Deuce McBride saved my life for another day. Big Mitch is back. The Brunson game is coming confident. I think, look, I think Knicks fans, I'll tell you this, I'm a hell of a lot more confident now than I was going into this game. I was extremely nervous. And then after that first quarter, I was, my confidence level was not, let's just say my confidence level was uh, lower than the level of my wine when I poured my glass tonight, which I this is the only thing I'm drinking tonight, so. I'm being good. Um, but yeah, I, I, I uh, the Brunson game is coming. I am confident. I think it's going to be a tough series. And uh, I'm excited to see how it plays out. Thank you, Hush. Ja, so focus. What's going on, Ja? Turns out winning the deuce minutes dictates the series. <laughs> winning them by 37 points. <laughs> Seriously, winning the minutes by 37 points. I I feel like, uh, my God, uh, Tommy Beer usually has has things like this. I, and I don't I don't know. Maybe he maybe he already tweeted something about it. Um, <clears throat> but I'm curious if there um, it has ever been a guy in the playoffs specifically. I wonder if I could look this up while I'm live streaming here. Uh, a guy in the playoffs who played 
um, as few minutes as Deuce played in this game and uh, had a larger plus minus. I'm going to I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Thank you, Josh. Justin, what's going on, Justin? Mitch played his ass off. Love to see him battle. He's never battled. I don't think I really don't know that he's ever battled like this. That, that man. Joel went up for that rebound. And Mitch was like, get the fuck out of here. And he was they were, and there were two other guys in it there. I think Hart Hart was in there too. I think it was Hart. I'm not sure if it was Hart though. Um that play symbolizes everything. That play absolutely symbolizes everything the team is about. And I'm again, I'm so happy it has to be pointed out that the that the longest tenured Nick that the longest tenured Nick is the guy who made the play. Um <clears throat> it's just it's incredibly fitting. It's incredibly fitting. All right, so Deuce and Pride tonight played 28 minutes, um, which is uh, not nothing, not nothing, but it's not everything. And as I said, he was a he was a plus uh, 37 in the game. All right, here we go. Fetching results right now. Thank you, Justin. Patrick Class, call me Thomas because I was doubting. Yeah, we all, I mean, we all were. We all were. You know, um, I, I think, well, I think you mean we were doubting Josh Hart. <laughs> I was doubting. So it's okay if you were doubting him too. Thanks, Patrick. Appreciate you, man. Okay, so this is not the first time this has happened. Since, I mean... So I don't know how far back, uh, and I'll read Dan Hidalgo's uh, comment here. Philly did a great job speeding us up on offense, especially in the first. Uh, baited us all night, but a dub is a dub is a dub. All hail King Hart. Let me address this, and then I'll read the deuce stat. Uh, completely agree. I thought they were everywhere. I thought they really utilized their length. I thought Joel in the first half before he went out, his ability to get up to the level and... Um, really just put a lot of pressure on the Knicks that they and they just didn't respond as well as as they should. I thought I thought they were when they put two on the ball with Brunson when Brunson had the ball, I thought their recovery to the role man, whoever it was, was really, really fast. I thought I thought their positioning was exceptional on defense throughout again, especially the first half, but really uh, throughout the game. <clears throat> and then I thought they kind of wore down the, the Knicks kind of ground them down as we got more and more through the second half. And like, that's when I really felt like Brunson got good looks and he just didn't convert them. Um, okay. Here's the, here's the do set. I don't know how far back um, basketball reference goes with uh, box plus minus, but <clears throat> according to what I am seeing right here, there have only been 16 players in NBA history who played uh, 28 or fewer minutes in a playoff game and were at least plus 37 in said game. Um, fittingly enough, <laughs> fittingly enough, two of them played for Tibbs. On the 2015 Chicago Bulls, when they beat the Bucks 120 to 66, um, Derek Rose and uh, Joakim Noah only played 25 minutes apiece in that game. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, and this is why Deuce's performance stands out. I'm looking through all the scores of all of the games in which someone, again, played at least 28 minutes and was at least a plus 37. The closest, the closest one of these games in terms of margin of victory was 19 points. And that is Eric Dampier was a plus 37 in 23 minutes when the Dallas Mavericks defeated the San Antonio Spurs on April 23rd, 2009. The next closest margin of victory was 20 points. Next closest was 21. And then after that, everything after that was at least a 25-point margin of victory. 
Again, this was a seven-point fucking game. And Deuce Pride did what he did. You could argue, based on these stats, that you, 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 it was as, again, I mean, this is hyperbolic to say this, but, like, the, if you're just looking at the numbers of the final score, his minutes, and the impact of the plus-minus, find me another player who had a, a bigger impact. You know, on a big playoff win. Uh, this is a guy who, again, last playoffs, didn't play more than five minutes in a game. This guy who was out of the rotation before the OG trade. Incredible. Thank you, Dan. Twin Orange, they said... Who will score outside of Brunson? They, I, me, they was me. I, I said it. Actually, no, I didn't say that. I, I did worry about the the bench minutes because I was, I had my doubts about Deuce, and I had my my doubts that Bogey would be able to survive defensively. Um, I thought Bogey played pretty well on defense, by the way. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it. But here's the thing: like, if you would have told me that Brunson had the shooting line that he did, I would have told you, all right, well and they won the game so we just we got a massive it was a big Dante game I guess right had to get a big Dante game and Dante had eight points and then after that I would have been like hold on so 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 Jalen was eight of 26 Dante had eight points and you're telling me we, we beat Philly and they had what they got what they got from Embiid and Maxi. I'm trying to think where I would have gone next. I probably would have gone to Hart next, but I would have gone to Hardenstein pretty soon. And, and Hardenstein only had six points in 18 minutes. So shows what the hell anybody knows. Thanks to an orange. Sam Garcia, one down, 15 to go. I love the energy, Sam. Thank you. I like. I also like the avatar. Um, let's, 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 how about this? Let's worry about game two. How about one down, three to go? I like that. One down, three to go. And then we can start the countdown again. Thank you, sir. Paul DeSantis, uh, mantra all year. Step up for your teammates. Play as a team and find a way. Live like everything, love everything about this team, but my blood pressure can't take it. I was, uh, as Fred Katz would say, I was unhinged. In the fourth quarter, I stood up. I think I stood up at the eight minute mark. Did not sit down again. My wife was watching in the other room because she was not going to be anywhere the fuck near me. Uh, and. I she audibly like yelled and or cheered or what I couldn't quite make it out because I was doing something myself at the OG three. The OG three was the moment where she was where she I think she she let it out a little bit. Um, my wife and I used to watch a lot more Knicks games together than we do now, but we have two kids, so it's kind of tough. But she does love playoff basketball, so um, yeah, her her blood pressure I don't I don't know who could who, whose blood pressure could take it less hers or mine. Thanks, Paul. Hush Zoo with another one. Like I said, Maxi and Embiid are their own beast. Kyle Lowry is that X factor for them. Showed it many times. Such a thorn in our side. Regardless, let's go Knicks. Um, <clears throat> oh, look at this. Mitchell Robinson said he felt, Mitchell Robinson said he felt more energized tonight on the floor. Thanks to the MSG crowd. I believe it. Kyle Lowry, man. Can that dude fucking retire already? Please. Seriously. Please. Um, I know Embiid was a plus 14 in the game, uh, which, you know, plus 14, 37 minutes tells us a lot. The game, you lost by seven. Kyle Lowry, 39 minutes plus six in a game they lost by seven. You know, uh, I wonder. Matt, uh, and Uber Jr. also plus six, I should say, played 39 minutes. Both of them played 39 minutes. And they were both plus six. I wonder if there's a different staggering that goes on in game two. Maybe Nick Nurse shortens the rotation a little bit. Um, but Toom, not much of an impact tonight. I was worried about him. Made one three, but he was one for four in 26 minutes. 
didn't have an impact. And then um, Buddy Heald and Campaign were were non entities. And uh, again, shout shout out B ball Paul. Take a bow. Minus twenty one eleven minutes. Kudos to you. Uh, Lowry was was unbelievable. I mean, dude scored eighteen points. Well, okay, let me say this. Maybe maybe famous last words. And I'll, I'll say I feel comfortable saying this because there's not there's nobody watching this live stream or anybody out there who's a Nick fan that has more respect for Kyle Lowry than I do. Just ask, just ask Alex, one of our patrons. How's he, how you feel right now, Alex? Um, I love you, Alex. I'm just playing with you. Uh, I don't think Kyle Lowry's get put getting 18 points a night in this series. Like I think. Maybe, 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 maybe for as much as the Sixers between the Sixers defense and the Sixers with Embiid and Maxi on the floor, to, like those two things combined, should give Nick Nurse some confidence with for the rest of the series. That like, listen, we lost because of a crazy shooting night from guys who are not going to shoot like that for the rest of the series. We have a plan at both ends. Our plan at both ends works. Um, we'll be fine. Let's steal game two, you know, like all that stuff. I don't know if he's getting 18 again from Lowry. And then you figure, all right, well, if he doesn't get 18 again from Lowry, maybe he gets it from other places. Tobias Harris, three for seven, womp womp, seven points. You know, Ubre had a wonderful defensive game, you know, 10 points, a little bit below his average. I don't know. You could probably count on those 18 from like a, an amalgamation or other sources. I guess at the end of the day, you know, the Sixers scored 104 points tonight. The Sixers scored 104 points tonight. And I, I feel... I think our defense is going to be okay in this series. I do. I, I think the Sixers will score more. I could see a game where they're catching fire from three and it, it, it really, you know, they maybe put up a, a bigger number. But I... I felt good about the Knicks defense tonight. You know, the maxi, the maxi drives were the only real breakdown. They'll work on that. They'll work on that. And then it's just about, it's just about the offensive part. And I, I have to think they'll find some answers there too. I have to think they'll find some answers. Thanks, Hush. Jibo, I love this fucking team. Do so proud of him. Big body Mitch Hart kept shooting. No one in the league has more heart than us. Period. It's a it's a it's a gutty win. It's a, it's a Knicks win. It's a Knicks win. It's a classic Knicks win. Um, like people will look at this game and they will say the more talented team lost. And like, it's just like it has to be said. It has to be said. How many playoff games do you see where two all NBA level players or at the very least all star level players, one of which is an MVP guy, have both have good games? Like, did either of them have a legendary game? No. Maxi and B did not have a legendary games. They each played well. Where they played well, and the other team has one guy that's in that sort of conversation, and he shot terribly. And the, the team with the guy with the with the one guy won the game. Like that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And it happened tonight. This fucking team, man. Jibo. What's going on, Jibo? Oh, wait, never mind. That was the last comment. Thank you, Jibo. John Ruiz Jr., I don't see a comment there, so hopefully uh, Kev could, could get something up for you. Thank you for the contribution. Anthony Sixto, Boyan being Boyan is going to be huge if we want to, if we want a run. Could you ask for better homegrown guys to root for? I love Deuce and Mitch. I'm, that's great to hear. That's great to hear because there was a lot of really, maybe not despondent, but like a lot of really upset Knicks fans the day they traded for OJ Ananobi. Because a lot of people out there that had poured their hearts and souls into those two guys to varying degrees. So to get Mitch, to get Deuce, it is big. And as far as Boyan goes, like, this is all they need from him. 
Like, I, again, I read he didn't have a great shooting night. Missed two freaking free throws. My God. Um, he, the the fast break, like I get why he didn't take the shot. The 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 it was a fast break that he it was, it looked like they were two either two on one or three on one, and he, like he did the right thing. He passed it off, but then maybe the pass I forget what happened, but the pass wasn't clear. Like they didn't even get a shot off. Like that was not ideal. It wasn't a perfect game from Bogey, but for what they need from him. You know, to 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 get get out there in the fourth quarter, that three to tie it up at eighty two all, that's a big fucking shot. And he the threes he took, the threes he took at the start of the second again when they were down, they were down by nine after the first quarter, and he came out and he hit two threes to get that like. The, the toughest thing in a playoff game to do is to turn the momentum around. And you could argue that Bogey was more responsible than anybody, even Deuce, arguably, for turning the momentum by just like those two threes. They immediately cut the lead in more than in half. Massive shots from Bogey. That's what he that's what they need from him. That's why they got him, because he's done this before. He's not afraid of this moment. Big game from Bogey. Big game from Bogey. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, Ja with another one. Almost every show I watched had someone predicting the Sixers to win. Uh, said something to the oh, uh, sorry. Every almost show, every show I watched that had someone predicting the Sixers to win. That that person said something to the amount of I don't trust Deuce. Would love to hear them now. Well, they're all eating their shoe. But again, like Ja, I, I can't, I can't sit here and kill those people. I, I was hopeful, but like the first time you step on the playoff stage, man, even like, like, I, like, I don't think the game was in Brunson's head. I do think Brunson was incredibly hyped up, but like, this was Brunson's first game at like, so last season, the league was still sleeping on Brunson. Heading into the playoffs. Like, he wasn't an All-NBA player. He had not made an All-Star team. And so, I think they're... I wonder... And God knows I wouldn't know because I've never played it, done anything at that level. But I wonder if there is a different level of pressure that comes... Like, yes, Brunson was the guy from day one of the playoffs last season. And even before that, he was the guy from day one of the playoffs when Luka was out the year before and he lit up Utah and Donovan Mitchell. So, like... Yes, Brunson is. I mean, the game five, game six against Miami. This this is not a comment on Brunson's playoff like acumen, but I do think that there is something different to like. Okay, now you're the MVP candidate. Now you're the guy who's going to finish on people's ballots. Everybody's looking at you. Everybody's looking at you. I wonder if that maybe seeped into Jalen a little bit. I don't say that to put down Jalen. Jalen's the best thing that's happened to this franchise since Patrick Ewing. And he could have a dozen more games like this. And I'd still say that. But my point is to is to reinforce how immense it was for Deuce to come on because he, more than Brunson, was stepping into a bigger role when you compare it to the last time McBride was in the playoffs. And it didn't phase him at all. That's like who in their first playoff game as a rotation player starts out four or four from three. Who does that? It's insane. Plus 37. What the fuck? Thank you, Joe. Knicks fan patrol with another one. Knicks fan patrol. Appreciate your. Your dedication tonight, man. You know Mitch loves playing Embiid. You don't. You don't off the backboard in the Mecca, you, cl- you clown. Uh, let's fucking go. Good night, Jeremy Dance, please. I don't know if we're getting to Jeremy Dance tonight because we got Kevin. I think that's on um, uh, Andrew's personal hard drive. Um, as far as Mitch, you know.
trying to remember. I forget which game it was. I think it was, yeah, no, I, 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 it was a game against Phoenix. And it was the one season that I, I covered the team in person. I was, little, I, and I was, I think I was, forget if I was talking to Mitch before the game or after the game. But it, he was matched up with DeAndre Ayton in the game. And DeAndre Ayton, I, I think I mentioned this story before. DeAndre Ayton was from his draft class. And Mitch, it was known, widely known, that he took any matchup with anybody in his draft class like very personally because he felt like he was the best center in his class. And DeAndre obviously got you know taken first and like he got taken in the second round. And just the way he talked about it, and I, I'll never forget it because like you could tell that this guy has so much pride. And it's not it's not bravado. It's not like a lot of the bullshit that we see. It's just pride that like I should be able to like be every bit as good as oh, like these guys. Like I think I'm sure at this point he knows like Embiid offensively is not like he's not he's never going to be that offensively. But in terms of like there's no one out there who should come in to my house and get and just like get me get on like own me when I'm defending them. And that, and that is, it's why it's like, he's such a silly guy. And yet underneath the silliness, there is a freaking competitor in there. A, a, and I think that is a big part of the reason why he has lasted here for so long. Is because Tibbs, especially, I think Tibbs sees that in him. I think Tibbs values that in him, and and it is part of the reason why Tibbs has never has never given up faith in Mitchell Robinson because he sees that he sees that competitor, and um, man, did that competitor come out and play tonight? Thank you, Knicks fan patrol. Hodge Zoo with another one. I really like Deuce on Maxi. Should maybe start for who? No, you're not gonna. You're not gonna start. You're not gonna break up your starting five. This is your starting five. Um, Dante Divincenzo it had a an unbelievable year. They need Dante. Dante's a massive part of their team. Is Mike Deuce's defense over Dante be a significant enough swing factor? that Deuce plays more minutes than Dante in this series. Played more minutes than him tonight. Um, Maybe. Maybe. You don't change your starting lineup. <clears throat> you don't do that. Thanks, Hush. Kevin McEwen, what's going on, Kev? My man. Game one is done. Let's go. Hashtag New York forever. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm happy. I'm so happy to put this one behind us. Gives a lot of breathing room because, like, look, I want them to win game two. I think game two is important. As Pat Riley always says, uh, playoff series doesn't begin until the road team wins a game. So if Philly wins game two, it's, you know, it's significant. That said, I I would still be – well, we'll see how it, how it transpires. Um, I actually would be surprised. I would not – I would be surprised if the Knicks are favored in game two. I'll just say that. Unless a beat doesn't play, then it's different. But I think this is going to be a long series, and I think I could – let me just say this. I think one way or another, I have a funny feeling we're coming back tied 2-2 two -two after four. Thanks, Kev. Sam Garcia's dad, Josh Hart, shuts the damn door. Hashtag one down, three to go. See, there you go. That's – tell your son to listen to you. I like that energy. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate you, man. Sergio Acosta, the generosity, man. Thank you. I'm drunk. Okay. Nixon five. Don't let number 11 get hot. 
Um, I mean, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. If you if you're right, then what I just said will be wrong, and it will not be two two after four games. Um, I'm happy you're drunk. I wish I was drunk. Um, it, although I do have to write a newsletter tonight, so maybe I'm happy I'm I'm not drunk. I am enjoying my glass of wine, though. I'll say that. Uh, but listen, you seem like a young guy. God bless. Go. You should go out and enjoy the fruits of life every night. Uh, I did when I was young. Once upon a time, that was a long time ago. Uh, I agree with you. The Sixers uh, would be behooved would behoove them to not let number eleven get hot, but I think he will. Thank you, Sergio. Haitian hey, Ferg, what's going on, brother? How are you, man? This team lifted JB tonight. Yes, 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 yes. And showed we're ready for the challenge. Mitch, Deuce, Bogey, Josh Hart gave us the boost we needed to win this game without Jalen Brunson playing well. Says a lot. JB will be better, and I'm hyped. I mean, that's the theme of the night. It's lifting up your teammates. It's do. It's like, and it's like, it's so, man... I think that's a real New York quality too. I think that's a real New York quality when like we don't, you know, if our coworker or, you know, member of your family or something is like not, it just doesn't have it. Like we don't point fingers of blame. That's just, that's not, that's not what we do. We're like, all right, what do you need? What do you need me to do? And they, Brunson needed them all tonight. And uh, he'll make up for it. He'll make up for it. Thanks, Asian. Can't believe they won this game. Uh, Paul Fromlick accidentally saying Hart's name in bed tonight. I'm picturing George Costanza with the, with the, with the trifecta. Uh, with the TV watching whatever game he was watching and then uh, eating a sandwich. And, and, uh, and what was he doing? Pleasuring you? No. Uh, good luck with that. Great comment. Patrick class. What's going on, Patrick? Shout out to Mitch. He's been, and always will be, Built for this shit, the Bayou bully. I will I will refer to it again, and I'm not going to say who it is because it's someone I have a great deal of respect for and someone who I've podcasted with, and he's awesome, and he's very good at his job. But it just goes to show the Knicks were a disaster when, the, when they drafted him because a very prominent draft analyst was like, the worst team that Mitchell Robinson could go to would be the Knicks because they can't get out of their own fucking way and this is a guy who needs a lot of love and care and needs to be brought along a certain type of way. Otherwise, he's just going to go kerplunk because um, like the dude like, you know, we, we all know Mitch's story. But there is a part of him that is built for New York. It's weird. You talk about the Bayou bully. Yes, he's from down. He's from Louisiana and he has a Louisiana mentality in some ways and a Louisiana attitude. Maybe is the better way to put it. But I think that that keeps him balanced, you know, and credit to the Knicks when they were a disaster and they drafted him, they were smart enough to know like, all right, we got something here. And then when this regime came aboard, you know, and it's like, so fun watching that dude. I hope he, I hope he's, I hope he's here for, I mean, I hope he retires the Nick, but like, I hope he, there are so few players in this franchise that have spent 10 years here. Mitch is at six. So another four is a lot to be clear. Very rare that role players spend 10 or more seasons with their teams. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Thanks, Patrick. Ja with another one. Ja, it's going to be one of those nights from you. I appreciate it, man. You're very generous. Also, always seemed funny how so many people acted like Mitch wasn't good enough, and especially not good enough to start. I never agreed with that, and games like tonight are why. Mitch was our best five tonight. Well, I mean, there's no question. 
there's no question Mitch was the best center tonight. Um, I you know what tonight showed you? It showed you like Isaiah Hardenstein is a top five offensive rebounder in the league. Tonight showed you the difference between I think iHeart and Mitch, who when he's healthy is like one of the I mean, I don't is it, is it, he's one of the ten greatest offensive rebounders in NBA history. I don't think that that's hyperbole. I, I really don't. Like, having watched this guy for as many years as we have, like, there is something about the way he offensive rebounds the basketball. Um, and I still don't think he's fully back yet. And then defensively, I also thought, like, again, you saw Mitch, and I thought Hardenstein played Embiid as well as I've I've seen any center play Embiid in the matchup in uh, back on January 5th. And Mitch might have my Mitch might have been better than that tonight. It, it, it's he's a special center. He's a, I mean, he's a special. Hey, look, the, the guy was a top town talent in his draft class, which was an all time draft class. You know, and it was just like ancillary stuff that had him dropped to the second round. And he's been consistent. It's just been the injuries. The last few years, it's just been the injuries. That's all it's been. So, I, look, I, I'm not making any changes to the starting lineup, but you know, might 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 Mitch play more minutes than Isaiah Hardenstein in this series? Absolutely, it's possible. As the as I look up and <clears throat> the Nuggets are up by a dozen, that's not a great sign. Thank you, Ja. Jay Stells, what's going on, Jay? Shout out Bogey. I badmouthed him for most of the season, but he came up big tonight. Um, yeah, I, I had my moment uh, after I forget what game where I was like, I'm done. The Bogey thing is is over. We lost the trade. <laughs> it was a bad trade. No, I forget. There was one game where I kind of lost my shit when he was just atrocious. Um. But if you go and look at it, if you go and look at it on balance, I'll play I'll pull up his stats right now. Um because like again, it, it's kind of tough to add, to 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 say like he came from a team, there was no stakes whatsoever, and he had the ball and shot it whenever he wanted, and he played it 30 33 minutes. He played 33 minutes a game with the Pistons this year. And he was come and he came here and he's like, all right. What's he going to be asked to do? He's going to be asked, you might play five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes. Like, we need you to do X, Y, and Z. It's a tough role adjustment. And yet, for as much as we'll sit here and be like, man, he couldn't hit the far side of a barn once he came to New York. He was a 56.9 effective field goal percentage guy in Detroit. On New York, he was a 52.1% effective field goal percentage guy. That number, 52.1 effect field goal percentage, um, was, just to put it into context, Julius this year for the Knicks, 51.8. Josh Hart this year for the Knicks, 49.3. Um, Quentin Grimes, the guy he got traded for, was only 53.0. You know, so, like, it wasn't that bad. Like, it when it was bad, it looked really bad. And it felt really bad, and like some of the turnovers and stuff, pretty ugly. But he wasn't like awful, and he got better, and he's he got on a roll, and like he's been here before. That's the key. He's been here before, and I think that's why they got him. Thank you, Jay Stills. Hush Zoo with another one. After watching Cavs Magic and Wolf Suns and seeing tomorrow's lineup, I can comfortably say our series is the number one series to watch. Primetime B ball. Let's go Knicks. Um, I'm curious how Phoenix responds to today. Are they just going to lay down and die? Are they done? Are they just like, we're out on the season. We're going to wait till we get a new coach and move on to the next day. Um, the Kawhi news is a bummer. That Kawhi is probably going to be out for game one of that series because I, I thought that series was shaping up to be the best series. Uh, along with ours, like one, one, a, whatever. Um, oh no, Fred just texted me. 
Fred has a super chat that has been logged. I have a feeling I know it's going to be too. Um. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. No. I think this is going to be a great series. Uh. But I'm hopeful that. Uh. I think we're still going. I think we're still going to get some other good series. I. I'd be. Some, I think we're going to get a couple of seven game series. Hope ours isn't one of them. Thanks, Hush. Zach Horowitz, what's going on, Zach? Mitch is back in the USA. I love it. That's a great line. What a team effort. Um, WNN. Win? Did you mean WIN? I don't know. I, I, I don't know what that means. Uh, yes, back in the USA. Love it. Party in the USA. Let's go a little Miley Cyrus action going on up in here. Thank you, Zach. Uh, Cohen. Giali Brosnan. Thank you. One for six, one out of 16. Check. Let's fucking go. Knicks. Let's fucking go. KFS. Josh Hart looking like Novak. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he looks like Novak. If he looked like Novak, JJ Reddick wouldn't need to work on his form with him this summer. But uh, alas, I think that's going to be really fruitful, by the way. I think that's going to be a really positive. I hope to run into uh, Josh maybe around here. This summer, we'll see. I don't know where they're going to work out, but I, I, I walk past. I've, I've run into JJ because we, we're, we're kind of neighbors. I've run into him like about half a dozen times, um, over the last year, and I, I walked past him. It was yesterday, and he was taking his. I think he was taking his kid to school. Uh, I will never muster up the courage to be like, "Hey," much to Andrew Claudio's chagrin. Uh, thanks, Cohen. James Shank. What's going on, James? Thank you for the generous contribution. Deuce has already played better in the playoffs than IQ ever did. Ah, uh, there's 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 no need for that. There's no need for that. Um Yeah, I mean look. I'm sure quickly he's gonna have big moments in the playoffs in his career and he's gonna come through with flying colors, whether it's for the Raptors or some other team. Uh I'm really happy with that. We have Deuce with Pride. And um, I, I I can't. Few things leave me truly speechless and feeling like this should not be possible. Where Deuce McBride has come as an NBA player, as an offensive player, I, I just. I just can't believe we're seeing I can't believe it. can't believe it. It's insane. Thank you, James. Alex, oh boy, I wanted to hear from Alex. Hello from the land of enchantment. He's bringing it back. <laughs> Tonight I was enchanted by Deuce. Well, there's a shocker. I thought you were going to say you were enchanted by Kyle Lowry. Hashtag Black Hoodie Crew. Yeah. Shout out to the Substack crew. I, I was, I couldn't, I can't. Uh, I couldn't. I didn't have the wherewithal to be an active participant tonight, but I'm sure you guys car carried forward without without me. Um, shout out sub stackers. Yes, Bronson will figure out the Philly defense. Good game plan by Tibbs showed real growth this year. <laughs> Alex, I don't know that anyone's made the most of a of a of a super chat more than you right there. Although you neglected to mention Kyle Lowry, how dare you? How dare you? Uh man, thanks for uh seriously Alex, thanks for being a uh just an A plus uh member of the community uh from day one. Um really thank you. Uh KFS isn't isn't KFS without you. So I appreciate appreciate the super chat, but more more importantly, thank you for just being you. Uh, El Coriano 11. What's going on, El Coriano? What would Deuce's extension look like if he didn't sign the extension this year? Oh, my God. Uh, that's a great question. Um, you say 12 to 15 million a year. I mean. Would another team give him their full mid-level? 
I mean, we got look. We got to see how the rest of the playoffs go. Uh, look for all, look. You never know. He he could shoot terribly the rest of the playoffs. As of right now, if you were handicapping it, I mean, Jesus, is he a? Would he be a full non-taxpayer mid-level guy? He's twenty whatever years old. His he could defend ones and twos. His defense on small quick guards, which there are a lot of in the league, is if not ten out of ten, it's like nine to nine point five out of ten. And the um, like the off the dribble guy, that was that was the other one. Oh my good, when was it? The drive early in the fourth quarter that made it, that broke a tie. It was 86 all. This was after Mitch tipped in the uh, Brunson miss. I think that got them within two or maybe that tied it also. But then Deuce drove and drove on Embiid. He put the ball on the floor on Joel Embiid and scored when none of his freaking teammates we're willing to challenge Joel Embiid at the at the rim. Deuce did, and he converted. I think that was I think that was his one non three point field goal make tonight. Um, and the threes. Yeah, I think he'd be a. I think he'd be a at, at least a non taxpayer mid level exception guy. At least is that, and the, and they, and and the, the 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 total contract, the total contract over three years, is for less than the non than the full non tax pyramid level. It's, it's wild. Uh, thanks, old Calariano. Uh, busy. What's going on, busy? With another one, we have taken over heat hashtag heat culture. What other team can win when their star is having a bad game? Since January 27th, we don't rely on our stars to win. We have learned to win as a team. I think, okay, of course, of course, your comment is going to inspire me to give praise to Tibbs. I think ever since Tibbs uh, came here, they've they've always... He has instilled the sort of qualities that you saw tonight play out to, to, to such that the team came through. I think the issues before this year, before the OG trade, is you just didn't have the players. Like the OG trade, and if you want to, you know, if you want to, like, can we call it the bogey trade now? If you want to throw that trade in there too, but especially the OG trade, it's like, okay, now everybody top to bottom, we like, they, they, we, we, they, we, we have a, a play style. It's a consistency of effort, a, a consistency of execution. Like the whole, you don't have to shoot well to play well thing. Everybody espoused that once they made the OG trade. Um, I'm trying uh, not to, I'm trying to dance around the thing, uh, but, but, and I just don't think he had the players before. He certainly didn't have the players near one. Um, but yeah. So I, I think that is to, cause I, you know, and here's the thing. The reason I think it's a tips quality is when have we seen this before? Think about some of those bulls teams. Think about some of those Bulls teams where it's like they seem to get these big contributions like out of left field from this guy or that guy. And it's like, you know, he he, he coaches them up like that. And that's, that's that's what he does. But you but again, you need the players. So it's like it's like he's not coaching up just anyone. It's like you need the players. You need the players to make it work. Um, And uh, yeah, I don't know. Are we the best culture in the NBA? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Thank you, Busy. Appreciate you as always, man. Uh, Worldwide Knicks. What's going on, uh, Worldwide Knicks? If this is Mitch, with his conditioning not right, what will he be like by the finals? (laughs) Oh, man. 
That's uh That's That's definitely uh not anticipatory. I appreciate it. No, no, I, I mean I think Mitch will get better. Cuz and here's the thing. There was a moment tonight in the first half where Mitch uh had an up like he had the ball at point blank range and missed. I don't think he's all the way back yet. Don't think he's all the way back for as much as he showed. I do not think he's all the way back. Running out of wine here. That's okay. Thanks, Worldwide Knicks. Chris Salenti. What's going on, Chris? Brunson was legit bad. Uh, bad shooting. I, I, I really want to be careful because, like, let me read the rest of your comment. Um, the Knicks still won. I'll take that as a good sign. Mitchell Robinson, 16-game player. Well, they have a lot of 16-game players. I think they showed you that tonight. Um, was Brunson bad? I thought defensively he worked his ass off. Drew a big charge in this game. Um, seven rebounds, man. Like, don't 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 sleep on such and such. I hate when I hate when talking heads say that. But like, don't sleep on Jalen Brunson grabbing seven rebounds. Like that was that was like he 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 was in there. You don't you don't get seven rebounds by not being in there. And then seven assists. The five turnovers is the is the tough part, right? It's 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 rare you're gonna see this shooting line with five turnovers. And I don't know if it's that the dribble was loose. I don't know if it's that he was again just a little unnerved. I'm still not gonna say he like played badly because I thought I thought his process was okay. I thought when the when the when the when the opportunity was there to get off the ball, he got the ball, he got off the ball. And like, you know, like look, it was it was a it was a bad shooting game, right? It was a bad shooting game. He hit 22 points on 26 shots. It's again, it's a bad shooting game. But I could think of some other Knicks in the past, may not be here anymore, who they had 22 points on 26 shots would be like, oh boy. It was a nice night. We'll move on. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Jay Live, what's going on, Jay? This win might be worth two because you know Brunson's going to see this as a stinker to bounce back from. Hashtag deuce of hearts. You know where I've arrived at now after going through all of the different combinations and permutations about, well, Philly did this, but New York did that, but Philly didn't do this, but New York didn't do this, and all of these sorts of things. I think I'm like, I came out, I'm coming out even. I'm coming out even. I don't think this is a game where, like, because we won this game, we're definitely going to win the series. I don't think this is a game that because Philly lost this game, they're definitely going to lose the series. I think there was enough. Like, I think when you, when you, when you add up the sum total of everything, the Kyle Lowry of it all and the Embiid and Max of it all and the Brunson of it all. I sound like, I sound like, I sound like Andrew, um, the Josh Hart threes of it all, uh, the, 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 everything, the, everything. When you add it all up, our three point shooting, their three point shooting. Um, Tobias came up very small. Like none of the other role players came up. Like all that stuff. When you add it all up, I think I can't, I'm I'm about even. You know, so like we won game one. It's gonna be a battle. Bronson will be better. Sixers will do some things better. They'll do some things worse. We'll do some things better. We'll do some things worse. On we go. Thanks, Jay Love. David Crockett. What's going on, David? It's all right there for us. We've not seen Nurse's full bag yet. No, we have not. He's he's uh is he a top five coach? Is he a top ten coach? He's in he's in that range. I thought tonight showed you how good a coach Nick Nurse is. Um but we've seen most of it. Uh the key on offense is and continues to be. Hans Gruber voice hit. 
I'm not going to do it at the Hans Gruber voice. Hit the glass. Although you just made me want to watch Die Hard. It, do you think, here's the question. This is the only question that matters right now. Do you think after I'm done with this live stream, I could sit and watch Die Hard instead of writing a newsletter and then just write the newsletter tomorrow morning and get it out at like noon tomorrow? How much of, how much would that be just me? That would, that would, that would be, I can't do that, right? I can't do that. But now all I can think about is fucking watching Die Hard because of you, David. Because of you. So you know what? If people don't get their newsletter at 5 a.m., I'm going to give them your email address, buddy. I don't even know if I have your email address. <laughs> I can probably look it up from Substack. Uh, thanks, man. What do we got? Are we doing the Jeremy dance? Oh, my God. Oh, shit. It's Andrew Claudio or Jalen Brunson. I can't tell which one. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First things first. Our drive. Second thing second. What's Nixon up? five. Third things third, fuck Philly. How about all that losing that you did for five years? It's got you to yet more losing. And shout out. I wanted to do this especially for you, John, because you got a bottle coming your way as well. I'm so I'm to my very cousin with that. Yeah. Uh, as, a, as a commemoration for the great year we had here at Nick's Film School, he sent me two bottles of these. One of these is yours. Um, you know, I don't indulge in this life, but I had a fun night at T Squared Social. So I may decide to have a little fun myself tonight. So stop doubting Josh Hart. Stop doubting my head coach. Stop doubting my basketball team. Philly, get him up out of here. And Bede, you fucked around and found out. Okay. This is not the dunk contest. My man, I hope you're okay, by the way, because I would love to, I would love for this sweep to not have any conditions oh on God. it. Okay. You, can I actually give you like seriousistic analysis for a second? Because I, I watch a little. Did you say bit. the word seriousistic? Yeah, ser serious Nick analysis for a second. Oh, I thought you like combined yeah. serious and realistic. In you which case, what? I was about to give you so many props. But serious Nick. Pretend analysis. I did. Pretend sure. I did. How's that? Yeah. Pretend I did, John. Love it. So we got midway through the fourth quarter, and I turned to XJ, and I was like, "This feels like playoff Randall game one." And not in the sense that Jalen was playing as bad because he was doing other things well. He was doing But anything. because the other team had game plan to stop one person, this very much felt like it did against Atlanta. That sure. they've figured out we got to cut the head off of this snake and yep. game plan against him. And Jalen was both playing bad and like Nurse was had a good game plan. The difference is we got some dogs on this team now. Like, Randall shot 7 of 20, 6 for 24 that night, and Brunson obviously shot 8 for 26. And it felt like midway through the fourth quarter of that game, that game was so important because you were going to stand back at it for the rest of the series. Like, oh, we gave away that game one for both teams. Which is why, John, because of Joel Embiid's status at the moment, I actually think this is a devastating loss for the Sixers. And after turning in, tuning in to the likes of Ricky Sanchez, they feel the exact same way. Because if they steal this one, then they can sit in bead game two. Now you've got an injured and injured and beat who did not want to talk to the media tonight. Like, like I think that's why he came back and barely like showed the max effort we saw in the first 15 minutes when a buddy of mine texted me that the series was over. Like, I, I after that it was like oh like who, wait the, who wait who texts him and texts a buddy a buddy over? it's in the super chats too don't worry it'll it'll come up later it'll come up later um point that being person should have their fandom revoked or they're just they're just a reactionary fan they they saw Joel Embiid no like that and forget how long a seven game series is. they had their fandom revoked and you know what else they I could say they don't care about winning oh they definitely don't care about winning no, no we got to get them some media training um. I'll tell you that much. Point is, now the Sixers are in the hole with an injured Embiid. Game one is 48 hours from now, and they're stuck. They either need him to regain superhuman form, you know, they're stuck. I, this. I, th I agree the loss, this loss was going to be devastating for whoever lost it. Much more devastating than a normal game one would normally be. And with the caveat, that game one dictates 
what what are the current I forget I haven't looked up the current numbers but it's something like 65 or 70 percent of series winners it's a lot it's a big it's a big number and last I just tweeted out earlier today last season mm -hmm. 12 out of the 15 teams that won game one went on to win their playoff series and I think one of those should have an asterisk because the Clippers won game one with Kawhi and then Kawhi went out injured so really you could it, it's like throw that out um Game one is is massive. I agree with that. The Sixers should be devastated. I the thing I keep going back and forth on in my head is whether the Knicks would be forget about what they would be, but like they they should have been in this alternate universe more devastated if they lost game one than the Sixers are devastated that they lost game one. And I, I and that's what I was the point I was trying to make a few minutes ago where I think I came out about even. I think both teams would be, should should have been equally devastated if they lost this game. Um, it, it, look, it was a it was a, it was a big win. That's mm -hmm. that's all there is to it. If the win. Sixers steal this game and beat could sick game two, you've stolen stolen head co uh, home court advantage, and then you don't have another game until Thursday. Am I allowed to not to not doubt that guy? I mean he. The fact you can not doubt those first five minutes. John, he has not historically survived playoff series. And now he's playing against a team that gives a damn. That second <laughs> half, they went at him. What 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 were his points in the second half? It was free throws. Those were his yeah, points all, in the second free half. Throws. It was free yeah, throws. It was free throws. Yeah, it was there was no you're they're right. a no, bad you're... rebounding team. And they just like 23 offensive rebounds. This is Cavs part two. No, no, no. That 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 part of it was insane. Um no, I, I I completely agree with you that he was was not the same player in the second half, and yet they still were intimidated by him on the defensive end. Anyone other wow. who, was, who was like, listen, wearing a cape. Josh Hart is a revelation. He is a hero in this city forever. Can can he recognize how how he scored two of his points tonight and it was going at Joel Embiid and not run away whenever he sees Joel Embiid at the basket? I just I could hear Tibbs from where I am. Yelling at Josh Hart in the film now. Yeah, like, of course. But like, him, but this, you know? but that's Josh Hart. That's why Josh Hart is to a lot of people a maddening player. Yes. Um, the oh, one maddening I, tonight, but he also hit the three biggest shots of the season. It felt like. I well, three of the top ten for sure. I just want to say, in terms of that Hawks game one, Randall was awful. Um, they didn't have Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey. They did have Ty, uh, Trey Young. Who I'm looking it up right now, 32 and 10, and seven rebounds actually on 23 shots. So Trey Young played a not an all time game, but like a, a really, really, really good playoff game. They only got one other guy who really showed up for them, but it was enough. It was Bo, uh, Bogdan, Bogdan, not Bogdan, Boyan. Yes, Bogdan. I always call Bogdan. Bogdan, um, Bogdanovich. And then as far as the Knicks, that was the Alec Burks game. Um, Derek Rose was also very good, not incredible, 17 points on 16 shots. And then RJ had was like the third probably yeah, he was the third best neck. He had uh 14 but on 15 looks. So like the Knicks tonight got more more uh or like more slash better performances from the supporting cast around Brunson. They did not have to deal with quite the same level of uh, or they dealt like Trey by himself plus Bogey was not as good as Maxi and Embiid tonight. I did not think so. Like this, and they won. They won the game. Let me clarify. I'm not specifically saying they're one to one comps in like no, but the they're good the comps. Game, they're they're, good I'm comps. specifically talking to the Brunson performance that it's very much the the team was going to have to pick up who yep. our best player and this one man hero is having a bad game now the beauty of what Jalen Brunson has done this season is he's earned so much credibility with this franchise and with this fan base. There's not going to be a single bad word said about Jalen Brunson. Oh, no, no, no. And, you and know, nobody, nobody has said a bad word about mm -hmm. him tonight, especially because it's like at no point in time for me, reasonable minds could differ for me. I don't think he put up a bad shot tonight. Yeah, I maybe. thought he put up a couple that third quarter. There was that one stretch where he put three shots up in a row that felt like him trying to force it to try to find it. And yet now for him, they might all be good the, shots. He might be. That's the thing. Yeah. Is there not bad shots for him? Him. Here we go. Him. Man, um, I got it but, underneath here. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like if those are the if that's what the defense it's it's all about what the defense gives you. 
And that was what the defense was giving them at that point. And if the defense gives you that shot and you're Jalen Brunson, you kind of need to take that shot. Otherwise, the whole infrastructure of the offense falls apart. Um, So that's why I don't like that's the difference between him and Julius. And I don't know if Julius got there in game one of Atlanta, but he eventually got there where he was just put up shots. No, that's not where it's at, Julius. Yeah. Um, Regardless, let's we could stop talking about the Atlanta series. We can. My point is, like, to your, really, to your point, they won this game, and we got this W, and we've taken control of the series. Their best player is on one leg. I am, look, I, I'll, I'll, he didn't speak to the media. I'm wondering what we're going to get from a health report. If that's the version of Embiid we're getting the rest of the series, I'm significantly more confident. I'm not. In seven. Putting... I'm not. I'm right there with you. Respect the opponent. Respect the MVT. We have the MVP. Respect Tyrese Maxey. Respect Nick. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. This was a huge win in the Mecca. Shout yeah. out to everybody that came to T Squared Social. Shout out to Josh Hart. My goodness, Deuce McBride. And yes. apparently, the uh, early grave we dug for Mitchell Robinson was just unnecessary because he reminded everybody that he single-handedly won a playoff series last year against a team with the second oh, best net rating. He, uh, shout, he, shout out to Kevin as well. <laughs> Kevin, Kev words who uh, held the fort down. Uh, Kev, shake your head. Yes or no. Do you want to come up and say anything or are you good? He's good. Okay. Shout, go follow Kev words. He did a, I mean, we've given him his flowers in the past. Um, he say his Twitter the, handle. I'm I'm looking for it. Hold on. I believe it's just Kev Words. Kev Words Wise, right? What is it? Okay, Kev, this is be so much easier. Put it in the chat and I'll read it. <laughs> um, right. Shout out to Kev for holding down the fort. Uh, we're going to have fun for the remainder of this. And not that you've already haven't been having fun. And partially You're because Jonathan Macri. You're not. Yeah, you don't do that. <laughs> Did you really just drink that? Yes, I did. We're gonna have some fun tonight, John Macri. Oh my god. Andrew's gonna get drunk. Uh his, his Twitter, Twitter handle, handle is at Kev Words, by the way. Giddy up. Woo! This is the most inebriated Andrew's ever been and that I've seen him. Yes. The Knicks get you get get you in some type of way, John Macri. Especially I'm gonna actually I need also let's go Mets. Yeah. How about that? Their All season. Right. Is we got some trends going since something happened where everybody declared something over. Yeah, look how it's happened since the Mets are 12 and three since everybody said their season Listen, is over. If you keep talking baseball, busy's biz, not going to send in any more super chats. So we got to away from that. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Kev. And thank you, Sam Rossi's dad, with our latest super chat here. Our superstars teammates have his back and they got him this game. Among the notables, Deuce, Mitch, and Hart. And one or two three-pointers by Bogey were huge. All of the threes from Bogey were huge. Um, all the threes from the Knicks were huge. Like, how about this? The Knicks tonight, again, 16 of 35 from three. Um, that may not sound like a lot, um, but I have a funny feeling the Knicks have not had a ton of um, a ton of games in their uh, playoff history uh, where they have had a more three point field goals than they did tonight. And if I, I think I have uh, filibustered for long enough. Yes, I have. Um, so tonight the Knicks hit 16 threes. And again, they hit 45.7% on those threes um, in their, in their history, their playoff history, which again, three point shots did not used to be the level that they are at now. They have had exactly one game, one game in their entire playoff history where they shot more, where they hit more than 16 threes. And that was back, believe it or not, in 1996 when they beat the Cleveland Cavaliers 106 83 and they made 17 threes. That was a first round game. Um, they also hit 16 threes against um, Miami in last year's postseason. That was game two. So, but in uh, so in game two of last year's playoffs, um, Knicks 14, 16 of 40 from three. They hit 40% from three tonight, 16 of 35. So 45.7% from three. Um, 
So you can actually say this was the second greatest three-point shooting performance in Nick playoff history. Again, the three-point shot has come a long way. Maybe not a lot of contenders, but still. Notable. Notable. Thanks, Ray. Hush zoo. I'm convinced Mitch intentionally played the way he did when he came back. Either that or he's a big game player. Cavs series. Mitch is here. Let's fucking go. Let's go, Knicks. Um, I think he was just working his way back. Keep in mind, he just had five days off. Probably helped. Um, had five days off and also played seven minutes in the last game of the season. So really, Mitchell Robinson has played seven minutes of basketball in the last seven days. That may have had something to do with it. Thanks, Ash. Ryan Shepard. What's going on, Ryan? Incredibly gutty performance from Deuce and Mitch. Josh Curry. <laughs> I see what you did there. Taking us home just like they drew it up. Unfucking real. I mean, how wild was this, man? How wild was this game? I when Josh like took those threes, I was like flabbergasted. And then he when he made that one. And again, we're talking about a guy who didn't sit in the second half. How many play again? I, I wish I wish basketball references uh stat head tool had the ability for me to look up how many players in NBA playoff history didn't sit an entire fourth quarter, went perfect three and three from three in set, or excuse me, didn't sit the entire second half. Played over 40 minutes in the game, went a perfect three of three from three in the fourth quarter, and uh, shot whatever the hell Josh Hart shot from three this year. I am I would be willing to wager a goodly sum of money. That's not a long list. It's just improbable stuff. Thank you, Ryan. Oh, my goodness. Very generous contribution from Gregory Alcala. I hope I got that right. Jesus Christ. That's a good way to start a super chat tonight. Can we give Mitch the keys to the city? This win with a bad Brunson game was huge. Deuce is giving us what I thought IQ would give us a year ago. And he also guards Maxi better than OG. We needed this one badly. Uh, take it one at a time. Do we need it badly? Yes. I'm inclined to say, <clears throat> as Denver uh, beats the Lakers, I think the win meant more to the Knicks than it did to the Sixers, if for no other reason than they, that they were at home. So for all the gobbledygook I was saying before about, eh, this has been a bigger deal with Knicks, Sixers, they Knicks were at home. Knicks were at home. They had to win this game. So, yes, we needed this one badly. Did Deuce guard Maxi better than OG? Um, it really—I mean, w really, what you're asking is who has the better screen navigation? Because anytime either one of those guys was on Maxi, the Sixers would would screen. I think the the deceiving part here is that when whenever Embiid, well, no, but then again, I was going to say. Whenever Embiid screened, OG would just willingly switch because they're comfortable with that switch. But you know what? Guess who else switched on to Embiid a few times in the second half there? It was Deuce. And the Knicks would, at some point in time, send the double. Although there were a couple of times where like Embiid gave it up and then he'd get it back. Like I don't think... It felt like the they the Sixers were doing a better job of exploiting those switches um, when it was OG switching off. I would have to go back and really rewatch all the possessions. Um, like without rewatching anything, if you're asking me who defended Deuce better or who defended Maxi better, Deuce or OG, I'll say Deuce. So I agree with you there. 
but I do think it's interesting. I, I really want to go back and just watch, rewatch all those possessions because those possessions will are the key to the series for as long as Embiid is is, is a part of the series. Um, and then uh, Deuce giving us what I thought quickly would give us a year ago. Yeah, I think a lot of people counted on quickly coming up big and he just you know, didn't have performance. You know, it's no shade. It sometimes takes guys a while in the playoffs. And yes, give Mitch all the keys that he wants. Animal Miles, what's going on, Animal? It's been amazing watching Deuce's growth. Nick's got a steal of a contract. Three years, $13 million. Three years, $13 million. And if he had become a free agent this offseason, again, as I said before, is an argument that some team would have given him an average of $13 million per season. Uh, it has been amazing to watch his growth, and it's just a testament to his work ethic. And it's a testament not only to his work ethic, but credit to the organization, credit to their draft people for identifying him. And if you want to even go a step further, we've talked all season long about how this team deserves credit for if you're going to commit to this coach. And obviously I'm biased, but I think they should commit to this coach. If you're going to commit to this coach, give the coach like the, the old the old Bill Parcells line. You want me to cook the meal? Let me shop for the ingredients. Well, they're not letting Tibbs, quote unquote, shop for the ingredients, but they're but give him the ingredients that he requests. Um, and when they drafted Deuce McBride, uh, we've it's been reported that that Tibbs wanted Deuce, that Deuce that Tibbs loved Deuce, that, uh, what he heard about him, what he saw from him, and I also think it it also is like I don't. I don't think that there's any question at this point that Deuce is a Tibbs guy through and through Tibbs guy. And yet he didn't play him a lot early on. And I think it just speaks to the fact that development does not always occur in the way that we might want it to occur. And this, the, the Knicks I think probably knew what they had on their hands with this kid believed in him, the coach believed in him, and yet he didn't play. Is that the right way to do it? Is that the wrong way to do it? I, I don't know. That's for smarter people than me to determine, but I do know what we're seeing now is pretty good. And so it feels like whatever they did it worked well enough. Thanks, Hannibal. Dan Hidalgo with another one. Bet they don't leave Hart that opening game too. I'm actually going to push back. I think they will. I think they will. I think they're going to stick with the game plan. I think they're going to play the odds. I think they're going to look at his shooting. I think they're going to say there's absolutely zero chance Josh Hart goes four for eight from three in game two. I think they're going to. I th I wouldn't be surprised if they left him more open. Because again, what it's their best chance. I think it's their best chance. Uh, Brando Embiid going to have nightmares about Mitch Deuce. Look, Embiid's uh Embiid's an all time great player. Um, all-time great player, and he'll, he's going to come back, and he's going to put his imprint on this series, and he's going to have some all-time great nightmares about Mitchell Robinson tonight. I got you, Brando. Don't worry, I got you. Uh, I have nothing to add. I'm just going to read a great uh tweet, great stat actually from DJ Zulo, who's been uh, awesome all night. Um, Knicks tonight from the corners. This is wild. Again, it's just like the, the, the night of crazy stats. Um, that from the corners, the Knicks were 0 of 9 tonight. They did not make a corner to be all night long. <laughs> Above the break, the Knicks were 16 for 26. <laughs> That's like, it's insane. They were 16 of 26 and above the break threes. Craziness. Uh, Brad, Brad Zemper, Zempar, not first time, long time, more like second or third, but I watch nightly and I love all the KFS content. Thank you. All the one-on-one -on -one drives tonight. They gave up concern me. Why no help defense? Um, because 
you, I think when you didn't see the help, first of all, it was just Maxi, and Maxi is an incredibly tough cover. And I thought the, on a lot of those drives, there was somebody there. Like there was a low man. It was actually Josh Hart quite a few times. And I did not think his, his, his low man defense was particularly good tonight. Um, but Maxi is so fast and so skilled that it didn't matter. And like, again, a lot of, not every time, but a lot of the times there was help there and help just didn't matter because again, I mean, you saw Maxi the one time he, he put up like an up and under, which was crazy. He's so, he's a, like, again, we've said it before. He is a, he is a guy that will probably finish in the top 20 in all NBA voting. He's an exceptional player and that is his most exceptional skill. Um, as far as not letting him get the head of steam initially, that's where Embiid comes into play. That's where Embiid comes into play because if you if you if you commit that much to Maxi, you'll be if because you, you're either gonna you you have to commit from somewhere. So if you're committing off of Embiid, you're giving Maxi the opportunity to pass to Embiid and giving Embiid that. Uh, wide open 14 or 16 or 18 footer that he has been draining this year like it's nothing. Or you're going to give their three-point shooters um, open looks. And by the way, they helped a lot off of those three-point shooters tonight. And where do you think a lot of those open threes came from? It came up from, again, trying to make sure that the Maxi and B pick and roll didn't get started. What your comment really highlights is the fact that this Sixers offense doesn't really have any weak spots. When you have a a big small pick and roll combination like Embiid and Maxi, which it's either them or Jokic Murray, it's the best big small pick and roll combination in the league. And then you surround them with guys who can make shots or make plays. It's the it's you it's the hardest. You it's like you can't stop that offense. And there were times when they looked pretty unstoppable tonight. And so, to your comment, my main my main thing that I'm going to say is 104 points. The Knicks gave up tonight. 104 points. Should that number probably have been a little higher? You figure some some better three point shooting from um, Philadelphia. Sure, it should have been. But as far as like how they defended and what they took away and what they made hard for Philly, like you cannot ask the Knicks to do a better job than they asked than they did tonight. You really can't. I thought they defended exceptionally well. Thank you, Brad. Uh, Ray with another one. Give Tibbs his flowers. Pushed all the right buttons. Uh, I mean, he he stuck with the group for the third quarter. Is that um, when he when he stuck with, with the third quarter? When he stuck with that lineup for a while and it had the Knicks down. I forget what the hell they were down by. They were down by a few points, um, and it was it was tense. But yeah, no, I was like, they were down by six. They were down by six. Um, I think he was holding off on Deuce because I think he knew he was going to leave Deuce in the rest of the game. It's my gut feeling. Now Deuce has played forty eight minutes, so like that dude doesn't get tired. But um, yeah, no, I think that, you want to get me to say Tibbs coached a good game. Uh, Jordan Jackman, what's going on, Jordan? Mitch has always been able to guard and bead. I've been saying this for years. Go back and watch the games. I've watched all of them, man. I've watched all of them, um, even the early years when the Knicks stunk. Um, I thought, I'll say this. I thought Mitch was always up for the challenge. I thought Embiid got him in foul trouble a couple of times, from what I recall, in the early years. I thought Mitch always made his life difficult. I, that's the big thing, right? Is like you can't let Embiid get into a groove where he just feels like this is easy. This is practice. These are practice shots. And I feel like Mitch always did enough to for Embiid. Again, Embiid had to work. Now, one of the keys moving forward is how often the Knicks will double when the Sixers don't get the switch. 
when the Sixers get the switch, the Knicks are going to double and then they're going to have to recover, which is why it's so vital for them to not give up the switch. They're going to try not to give up the switch as much as they can. And I thought for the most part, they did a very nice job tonight of not giving up the switch initially. Will they double it all when they don't give up the switch? I don't think that they should. The one exception, the one exception, and you saw it a few times tonight, is in late clock situations, which they try to, I, I, man, talk about a chess match. That's a chess match playing right there out on the court for you where in the Knicks on that, what was that possession where they sent the double at like, it was like under four seconds they sent the double. And it was enough, to, and and it was not only that. Embiid made the pass, and I think it was to Ubre. They had someone there. It was a two-on-one. It was Hart, I think, that had the two low men. And once that was the that was the, what you had to give up to to send the double. Um, and Hart was kind of there, but Embiid made the pass, and the p- pass was pinpoint, and Ubre just converted. Like he's so good, Embiid just is so good. But which is why, to your point. Having a guy like Mitch who feels confident in that matchup, it's so important. It's so vital. Thank you, Jordan. Hush Zoo. I'll eat crow. This is why Josh Hart got his money. Well, I think there's a lot of people probably eating a little crow tonight, or at least they should be. Um, I commented in my newsletter yesterday. Got a little, got, I got, got out of my soapbox a little bit. There was a little bit of get off my lawn energy. In uh, one of my responses to to a newsletter question uh, in which I was like, because I got a couple of questions where it's like, well, you know. How, like, how, w- w- will he take Josh Hart out if he's not hitting shots and like who are we going to put in for him and how quickly can we get him out of there? Like all these different versions of the same thing. I'm like, man. We've watched the same guy, right? This year, the guy who saved the Knicks ass. Time and time and time and time and time again over the last three months. This is who Josh Hart is. This is what he does. And the coach knows it. So he leaves him out there. What do you mean? I oh wait, like old man yelled at clouds energy? You have that? Uh it's so rare as to almost being as to almost be inconsequential. Uh but I've, yes. I've literally never seen that side of you. I Quite literally, you're you're young at heart. Oh, see, young at heart, Josh Hart. That worked perfect. Young at heart turns forty one in twenty days. Could have told me it was your twenty first birthday for the twentieth time, John, and I believe it. That's why I love you, Andrew. Oh, Andrew Claudia with a uh, super chat. How, how crazy he's making a super chat from the producer's chair. Buddy of mine texted me in the first quarter. The series is over. I have to say, I agree. Hashtag Nixon five. Again, uh, fire that person into the sun. Nixon five. Are you you picked Nixon seven before the series? I did. Are you sticking? And then I watched it? Joel Embiid limp around for two quarters. Okay. I still, I, I remember what the caveat to my Nixon seven was. It was projection projecting the health of Joel Embiid for the rest of the series to get better, and he left in the second quarter with an injury. It reminded me a lot of Jimmy Butler last year, where the Heat were just like get through this game with a W. And we'll sit him game two. Yeah. That's why I think this is a devastating loss for the Sixers. Let's see if he comes out for game two. Um, and if he doesn't, let's see if the Knicks can take advantage. Bingo. Thanks, Andrew. Tom Cappuccini. Oh, Tom was in his black hoodie earlier today. Every time the Knicks are on the ropes and the most faithful viewers start to wonder if they got one more punch left in them, they come back and they show they have three punches left. What a team. Can't wait for Monday. Dom, I I say it repeatedly. You are the epitome of what a fan should be. You are nervous like I am. (laughs) You're very nervous. You respect the opposition. And uh, you believe and you appreciate what they are and what they're capable of doing. Um, yeah, this has been who they are. I mean, don't, I, don't get me wrong. When they were down six in the third quarter, I was. I was nervous. I was nervous. But they got it done. Thank you, though. Hush, Zoo. Do we like OG on Maxi? I, I do like it. I do like it. I like it. Um, 
I think OG should be on Maxi when they start out the game. I think that's I think that's a good matchup. It like you could switch him onto Embiid. You know, the only problem I guess, and I wonder if this is a factor, is OG got in foul trouble tonight. And if you don't have him on Maxi, I think it keeps him out of foul trouble. Now, the alternative is you have DiVincenzo on Maxi. And if you have DiVincenzo on Maxi, you are essentially you're kind of conceding more Maxi drives, but I feel like with the screening they're doing, you're kind of conceding that anyway. And if you have OG off the ball, you're allowing, obviously, OG to help. Now, the tough part, just two things. One, DiVincenzo has been great at playing defense from behind this year. Where he gets beat, he's never really beat, and he's able to like poke the ball away or, or affect a shot attempt. Like, by the way, how many times? That's the other thing tonight, man. How many times Jalen Brunson have the sort of shot, shot attempts that he's had all year that have been good shot attempts, and he got blocked from behind? I feel like he got blocked from behind more tonight than in any other game this year. That was a big deal, the block from behind for him. Um, Maxi, though, Maxi's not like Brunson. Maxi is a much, obviously, he's a speed demon. So is D, is Steven Chenzo going to be able to do that with any kind of consistent way? Affect the play still from behind? I don't know. Um, and then in terms of OG helping off, o, OG not being on Maxi and being on another assignment, then helping on the Maxi drives, or for that matter, helping on on you know Embiid rolls or whatever. Uh, if it's Maxi, he's so freaking fast. That's the tough part about Maxi is it's like once he gets that head of steam. He's kind of he's kind of impossible to to stop. So I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I I'd mix it up. Vary your coverages. That's what I do. Uh, thanks again, Dom, for another one. Deuce and Mitch may turn out to be the biggest X factors if they win this. I can't be any prouder writing this bogey sighting was a blessing. I hope Dante can burn the Sixers in the series. Yeah, like, again, I think Dante, it was more the defensive part that Tibbs took him off and, and put Deuce on him uh, instead. Um, because, like, Dante tonight, he was he was 2 of 5 from deep. Like, if anything, you're going to criticize him. He didn't take more threes. But I thought he was selective in his threes. I thought he could have fired away probably a couple times that he didn't. Um, Dante needs to be better than one of five from inside the arc. Uh, that has to improve. Those were good looks. Those were all good looks. And he made one of them. So he has to be better. That's it. Dante has to be better. I'm not worried about three-point shooting. Two of five is, is fine. That ratio is fine. Hajju. Add Deuce to the list of young players that developed under us. Those detractors who said the Knicks are where careers go to die can go suck it. We are here. Um, Detroit immensely valued Grimes in that trade, considering they traded two rotation players for him and didn't get a first round pick. So they valued Grimes a lot. The Raptors, needless to say, valued Emmanuel quickly a ton. Um, RJ, I like whether you think he is whatever you think about RJ, you can't call that like a development story because he he was a third pick in the draft. But Grimes quickly, Deuce, Mitch, um, you know, Obi, a little bit, a little bit. And the last thing I want to say on that note is it's not just players they drafted. Go look at, again, I've shouted it out a couple times now, Michael Scotto's article in Hoops Hype on Isaiah Hardenstein and go read what he talks about in terms of Tom Thibodeau. Go go read Jalen Brunson's words about Tom Thibodeau and, and playing under Tibbs. Like, player, like players who care about the right things know they're going to come here and get better. That's the thing. 
Thanks, Hush. Ben! Ben Kim Gerby. Say it with me, John. Storybook season. Hashtag third act now. I hope you're right. Uh, it was certainly a storybook game one, but they got to do a lot more to win the series, and then, then the fun will start. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate you as always. Christopher Halecki. What's going on, Chris? It seemed like the starters were very tight and almost overthinking it. Deuce just came out firing. Uh, Boy McDonough did the same. And, and at the end, so did Hart. Uh, yeah, I mean, the bench won them the game. You know, Hart hit the big threes in the in the second in the fourth quarter but plus 37 plus 27 and then Mitchell Robinson plus 20 like again plus 37 plus 27 plus 20 those are what your three bench players did tonight that's we haven't like we haven't seen that from this Knicks team since i don't know like, that's last year's team, not this year's team. And thank God the, the bench saved their bacon tonight. Thanks, Chris. Greg Film Stuff. What's going on, Greg? Thank you for the very generous contribution. New York gave me chest pains all fourth quarter. I completely agree. It was a dicey fourth. It was not their most well-executed fourth. The turnover. Oh, my God, that freaking turnover. The turnover where it was like there were two there were two terrible turnovers. There was the um Brunson turnover. I mean Brunson Brunson was rough tonight. That led to the Ubre fast break, and I, I forget who actually finished the bucket, but whatever. And then um when did Hart inbound the ball? He was trying to inbound, he tr tried to go to DiVincenzo and then didn't didn't connect, and that was a fast break. I mean it's they overcame some. They overcame some slumps, some stuff, but they but they also made big shots, so it's okay. Alex, what's going on? Uh, other Alex, relishing this win on vacation in Hilton Head. Oh, have fun watching Scotty crush another PGA tournament. Um, I actually did watch a little bit of the Masters on uh, Saturday. I watched a little Saturday Masters, and uh, it's, it's the first golf I've watched in. Probably a year. He's good. He's a good player. Uh, Deuce taking on the IQ role of home ground fan fave. JB always bounces back. I bet he scores over 40 in game two. I hope he doesn't need to score 40 in game two. Because that would mean... I, I, I hope he just... You play within the offense. Take what the defense has given you. Make the right reads. That's all that matters. Thanks, Alex. But by all means, if you'd like to score 40 points in game two, Jalen Brunson, please score 40 points in a I blowout mean, win in game two. Just don't have any more games like this. Cosign. That's all. Greg Garcia, thank you for the um, contribution. Uh, busy. Haven't heard any bogey love. Uh, the floor is yours. I Some people are giving it to him. Um, Bro, this was sent at 9.46 p.m. Like, this was hours ago. Then Bogey started getting love. Don't worry. <laughs> no, but I'm ha thank you, Busy, because he... The guy's got been so maligned. He's gotten killed. Not as much as Alec Burks, but he doesn't deserve it like Alec Burks. Like, to come in and take those... Sh like, the dude, just without hesitation, entered the game and, like, fired away. And momentum, you want to talk about pressure? The fucking place, that was, they weren't maybe quiet, but like the air was out of the balloon. Bogey put the air back in the, like the, the he put the air back in the balloon at the top of the second quarter. Just the honorable mention of all honorable mentions tonight, he'll get. He's not getting the star of the game. That, you know, who the top three guys, they, he, they get that. But Bogey's, Right there. With OJ and Obi, by the way. The two of them. Needed needed everybody. Needed everybody. Thank you, Busy. Dom Cappuccini. 
I am very thankful that Embiid didn't have that emotional Willis Reed impact in the second half. Granted, Lowry had a lot to do with nearly stealing it. I'll take my chances with JB in game two. We're all taking our chances with JB in game two. I mean, if somebody would have, t- here, here's another one. If somebody would have told you, if somebody would have told you that Kyle Lowry outplayed Jalen Brunson in game one, what would you have said? How would you have said this game was going to go? And in beat in Max Yeager games. How would you have said this game is going to go? Um, as far as the Willis Reed impact, I mean, it was a, it was a 20 point turnaround. I think you could argue. I don't know, Dom. I, I think you could, could argue he had a pretty big impact and the Knicks just withstood it. You know, the Knicks just withstood it. Thank you, Dom, as always. Uh, Brendan Cooney. What's going on, Brendan? Can't decide if I'm more ecstatic we got the W despite Brunson's outlier of a poor game or more worried because the Sixers did legit guard him well and he didn't have good numbers versus the Sixers this year. Um, I completely hear what you're saying. I was very worried about... I'm not very worried. I was worried about the matchup, right? I was worried about the matchup. For the reasons that I talked to with uh, 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 DJ and and uh, Benji about length bothers him. You know, length bothers him. The thing that I'm I'm hopeful about is uh, again I, I want to go I want to rewatch the all the all of his shot attempts. I really did think he started to find some answers in the third quarter as far as getting where he wanted to go and figuring out how to get, whether it was Ubre Ubre on him, off of him, um, you know, or whoever he, like getting the matchups that he wanted. I just thought he was missing good looks. I, again, I want to go back and rewatch them. I thought he, he just missed some good looks, but we'll see. I want to go back and rewatch, but I, I, that's very valid. I think they they have as good an answer for Brunson as probably any probably any East playoff team outside of you know maybe Boston. Thanks, Brendan. Daniel Wasserback the third. Uh, thank you very much, Daniel, for the generous contribution. Nick's Film School and John Macri, long overdue super chat from Albany. Oh, okay. I've met Albany in a few years. I enjoyed my time there um, when I was there a long time ago. My wife had a, or was that maybe Troy? I forget if it was in Troy or Albany. I had a place that served these little little, little hot dogs, little mini hot dogs. Maybe you know what I'm talking about. Uh, two words, Josh Hart. Thanks for the post game podcast. I listened to at work the next day. Well, I appreciate that, Daniel. Thank you for chiming in and and contributing and showing your generosity. Um, yeah, Josh Hart, gotta have it. If you don't have it, you're you're screwed. We had it. Sixers didn't. That's all that matters. Thanks you so much, Daniel. Cohen uh, Jolly Brosnan, thank you for another super chat here. Didn't. Foul Mitch in the bonus. My boys deadly from free throw. Um, Saying don't foul Mitch in the bonus. Don't foul Mitch in the bonus. Yes, I got it. Uh, big free throws, right? And 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 after he hit, who were the Andrew? Who who were the big free throws against down the stretch of the season in the game? That would won? be that would be the little brother, the but, Brooklyn, Nets. Uh, Brooklyn Nets. Yeah. I thought so. Um, that's big for Mitch. That's big. That's big for his his mental, as he would say. Thanks, Colin. Brendan with another one. 21 and three with OG. Takes four losses to lose a series, so we're okay. Uh I you know, I, I'm there's part of me that wishes that, that stat didn't exist. Um not that I don't love OG and Obi. I do. He's incredible and I'm beyond happy he's on our team you know but it does it 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 to me it instills like kind of a false sense of security that like oh it's all right we have oj and we'll be fine as you just said yourself brendan 
like the Sixers team has some answers for the Knicks. Um, OG is a really nice trump card to have uh, on the defensive end, and the fact that he could make, uh, you know, arguably the biggest three of the game. And 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 by the way, that wasn't all he did. I thought OG hit, I had a couple of nice drives in this game, really nice drives with big time finishes. Uh, where I, there was the one that he went for it with Embiid where he didn't get, but there were the, all the other ones where he drove hard to the basket worked out well for him. I love it when he puts the ball on the floor and, and goes to the rim and he could get a little bit of a head of steam because that dude is a, he's a, he's a, you know what? <clears throat> Thanks, Brandon. Busy. You're busy. Come on, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Didn't see OG on Harris much. I would like to see that. I want to see DiVincenzo on Maxi. We got to continue to play fast. That's when the game switched. Remember the um, town hall. That'll be my biggest disappointment. Obviously, adjustments aren't. Okay, you want to play faster. Because Embiid's creaky knee and the whole thing. Could they have played faster in this game? Like, did they play as fast in this game as they played in the Boston game? When they really, like, Hart was awesome. They really made an effort to get out and run constantly. Um, no, they were not as fast in this game. <clears throat> it's harder to play fast off of makes. And the Sixers were making a lot of shots in the first quarter. So I'm wondering if that wasn't kind of a like a self-fulfilling prophecy type of deal. Um, as far as OG on Harris, I don't know. Are you saying that because you want OG there to stop Harris? Or I'm assuming because you want OG to be able to help off of Harris. I That's exactly what he's saying. The, okay. the roaming free safety. that Because that's how they played him in the regular season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Again, I think there's arguments for both sides. Like, I think DiVincenzo is a tough, like, Maxi's a tough cover for DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo's been really good defensively this year. I think asking him to hang with Maxi is, is asking a lot. Um, but then again, like, <clears throat> Deuce is the best answer. You know? So it's about. <laughs> How about this? It's about surviving the non-deuce minutes. I mean that I again I shit thee not. It's about surviving the non-deuce minutes. Busy with another one. Yeah. And and oh and match sorry. And match Mitch with Embiid. Let iHeart Cook read. Um, so that's an interesting one. Uh shout out to uh Fred Katz, who before the game tweeted out that he thought we would get minutes from Make sure I get this right. He thought we would see minutes from Deuce Bogey, DiVincenzo, OG, and Hardenstein. So I'll say that again. Deuce, DiVincenzo, Bogey, OG, and Hardenstein. Now, we didn't get any minutes there from that lineup tonight because uh, Deuce came in for DiVincenzo. So that didn't happen. If what you're suggesting is something that they look to do, which is to match the Mitch minutes with Embiid more, because Hardenstein is going to start, then I think that lineup would be something that they would go to. And I really like the potential of that lineup. I really like the potential of that lineup to score against Philly. Now, tonight, the second unit didn't have an issue scoring. So, I don't know. Look, I think Hardenstein is going to play better. That's the thing. I think he's going to play better. Brian Lest. I'm still in shock. Me too, kind of. It, I've been, we've been talking for two hours and 35 minutes. It feels like a half an hour. My brain just doesn't compute many things about this game. November Mitch returns, posts video on X, drilling free throws, and then does it. I did not. I did not see the video that he posted. I'll take your word for it. 
And then another one, Hart equals Reggie Miller. Deuce, Hall of Fame class, 2045. Brunson, not playing like Superman. Scott Foster officiating a Knicks win. And bead God mode to dead to undead. A lot of stuff happened. You forget the Kyle Lowry game. It's pretty freaking good. Um, I thought, I got to tell you, I thought Scott was, Foster's whistle was fine. That was fine. I know he doesn't officiate a lot of next wins, but I thought it was fine. Although, no, actually, that's not really true. Go go look at the, the freaking report the Knicks put out before the game. Inspired move by them. Uh, Sam Garcia with another one. Uh, thank you, Sam. Thought Deuce did a pretty good job guarding Maxi tonight. Yeah, he did better than pretty good. I thought he did a really good job. Would you consider swapping Deuce for Dante in the starting lineup to match their minute? No. Not changing the starting lineup. The starting lineup was excellent all year. Dante struggled a little bit defensively. He struggled a little bit offensively. Jalen Brunson struggled offensively. Dante DiVincenzo will have, I can guarantee you, he will win them playoff games in this playoff run. Multiple playoff games. You keep the starting lineup where it is. The nice thing, and this is, I always said the same thing about quickly, and why I was pretty steadfast right up until like maybe the very end, where I was like, you don't, you don't need to start quickly. If you want to bring him off the bench and still have him play upwards of 30 minutes, you can do that. I don't, I think that would be, that would be a scared reaction, frankly, if they switch the starting lineup to be like, oh, no. And also, how great is it to have Deuce McBride's energy off the bench as a change of pace if you need it? Because that's what his defense gives you. That's what his defense gives you. You want to keep that. You want to cherish that. Is what you want to do. Rich McLeod, what's going on? Rich, 76ers more like smelling like shit, sirs. I see what you tried to do there. I appreciate the effort. Kind of landed the plate. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. Greg Garcia, what's going on, Greg? OG DeBusher and Grimes was supposed to be the sniper, but it ended up being Deuce. Uh, I mean, the, the OG DeBusher comparisons in terms of like that trade just get wilder by the day. Now, notably, Knicks did not win the championship in the year they traded for, for Deuce and Pride. They won the championship the next year. They lost to the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. So we'll see what happens this year. Um, and then as far as, yeah, Grimes being the sniper, we thought it's so fun. Like, watching Deuce's shot, like these high arcing, like it looks like a shot put, and they go in. They go in. But yeah, no, the front office kind of has a good pulse on the on this team or a good beat on the pulse of this team. Excuse me. Armand Bernadette Bernard Judge. I'll, I'll pronounce that correctly one of these days, Armin. What a Josh Hart this fucking team game. Let me see if I could read that again. What a Josh Hart this fucking team game. No, I read it correctly. Also, never forget that the Lakers promised to draft Mitch and then drafted Mo Wagner instead. Yeah, I remember that rumor got around. I mean, Mo Wagner's a good player. I mean, Lakers didn't make use of him, but Mo Wagner's a good player. He's one of probably maybe the best player for the freaking Magic today. Uh, he's not Mitch. Kevin Danishevsky, what's going on, Kev? Relieved. Where you bagged the late super chat for you? Relieved. Such similarities to last year's game one, including with Josh Hart making the biggest shot of the game. Uh, Deuce is all I thought Quentin Grimes would be and more. Got to find a way to stop Maxi and get JB going in game two. Yeah, I mean, look, they're going to... Tibbs has two days. Or tomorrow, and then it's game day. But uh, frankly... If you're asking me, are you happy the turnaround time is short or do you wish the turnaround time was longer to get like more time for adjustments or whatever? 
I wish I wish they were playing tomorrow with Embiid's status right now. I wish they were playing tomorrow. So I'm very happy they're playing on Monday. Thanks, Kev. John Sanda, what's going on, John? How much of JB's struggles tonight do you think were Philly's game plan versus just a great player having an off night? I think it's about, I mean, honestly, I kind of want to almost say it's 50-50. I think, you know, that's not fair. It's Philly had a great game plan against him. And they've switched things up. They varied up coverages. They made him think twice. They did all the things you expected that they were going to do. And then eventually he started to fight back and get some stuff that he wanted. But by that point, I think I, he just was not himself. And so the column A impacted column B. So I want to give more credit to Philly's game plan than just a good, a great player having an off night. That said, um, the fact that I'm crediting Philly's game plan more doesn't make me think that Brunson is going to continue to have off games. I think he'll be better. I think it'll probably be a lot better. Thanks, John. Uh, Kento, Kento Kato. What's going on, Kento? Need to limit Lowry. Um, yeah, but like again, you got this devastating. Devastating, devastating, devastating pick and roll combination, and the help has to come from somewhere. So, you know, and it's like Kyle Lowry's gonna beat you. I mean, you know, it's a good shooter. So, um, look at pairing Deuce with OG Moore versus Maxi, and find ways to free up Jalen Brunson's mid range game. I, I mean, again, thought they kind of freed it up. He just wasn't hitting him. Um, but huge win with uh, Brunson, Divincenzo shooting the way they did. Mitch Hart, Deuce, Bogey, unreal. Uh, so you want to pair Deuce with OG more versus Maxi. You want the two of them out there more versus Maxi. Well, look, I think I think you will get both of them together. You're probably not going to get both of them together until the second and fourth quarters of these games, which is like that's those are pivotal quarters. So I'm not too upset about that like I, they're just they're not going to change their starting lineup and they're not going to completely rejigger their rotations i don't think they will at least and I, I just i don't think they should i don't think they should i think i think they will i think they will adjust and i don't think they i don't think that adjustment needs to be in terms of significant alterations to when your personnel is out there from the opening tip they 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 like Tibbs adjusted in terms of playing the guys that he knew he had to play. I, I don't think they need to start, adjust the starting lineup. Thanks, Kato. Sincere the genius. What's going on, Sincere the genius? With Embiid hobbled, they should be throwing more lobs to Mitch. He can't jump with him. Uh, the problem is they don't have a great lob thrower on this team. Brunson's the best one. And we've seen Brunson go to the Mitch lob more uh, since Mitch has come back from injury. Uh, it is absolutely something I would like to see them try to do more. That said, even though Embiid is hobbled, I wonder if he couldn't still like disrupt some of that. Uh, you don't know until you try it. I'd like to see them try it. I think it's a great call by you. Um, I just don't. I don't. I don't feel like that. That's the. You know, that's like the smoking gun. Like once you find that, then we'll everything will die. I think this this Philly defense offers a lot of challenges. Thanks, man. Sincere. Flashy. My goodness. Fla Who are you, Flashy? Another bottle of wine on me. It's a celebration. Flashy. I don't know who you are, but I love you and I thank you. And I wish I had that bottle of wine right here next to me right now because my glass has been empty for a while. I've hesitated asking Andrew to step in for me for uh, 60 seconds so I could take the pee break and uh, fill up my glass with something. But maybe this comment will inspire me to ask him to do it. Go get your drink. I'm going to dance. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I get to hang out with Jeremy and his girlfriend tonight. That was actually really fun. Um, well, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us here in what is almost full three hours of the KFS playoff post game show. Hope you like the new designed graphic. Uh, shout out to, uh, I'm not going to put his name out there, but we have a graphics guy uh, who has been outstanding with helping me redesign stuff. Why do I still have my Oakleys on? Uh, thank you sincerely for all the generosity. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you are in the New York City area, I will just remind everybody, we are doing a watch party for game four. So if you'd like to join us at T-Squared Social, please do. We'll be doing trivia at halftime as well. Also, I hope I could say this. It's Sean with W's birthday on game four. So next Sunday. Uh, so we'll be doing something at halftime or something after the game. And uh, you should all join us. OK, we'll have a lot of fun, hopefully watching the Knicks wrap up this series in a nice little little sweeper Rooney. And uh, yeah, this will this will hopefully be a, a fun series that uh, and a fun time watching the end of this series on on Sunday. So join us then. Uh, John is still not here. Um, thank you, Flashy. I'll echo what John said. We're keeping you on the screen until he gets back. Uh, I like your hat. I can't see what design it is, but thank you, Flashy. For those listening on the pod, the man's name is Flashy. Just put the word flashy on as a name. I respect it. I'm Andrew Flashy. Nice to meet you. I hear John coming back. I got to meet XJ, by the way, everybody. XJ, uh, we had dinner the other night with a couple of KFS folks, and he uh, came to the watch party today, so that was cool. A uh, lot of back and forth of <laughs> leave Josh Hart alone <laughs> at, the, at the watch party today. Uh, but, yeah, it was good. I believe John Macri is almost back because he went to go get uh, some more wine. Oh, you know what? There's a super chat directed to me. Flashy, sincerely, thank you for the generosity. So let's get the Nick fan for troll. Thank you, GMAC. Respect the Mecca. Lob off the backboard and find out. I agree. John Macri's back. I am back. Yes. How are you? you? Agree with, I'm good. You agree with Nick fan patrol? Fuck I had a shot of whiskey out. an hour. I had shot of whiskey about an hour ago and i'm still feeling it <clears throat> you have a lot of practice for you because it's me. me yes i know mm. it's okay uh listen remember quitters never win and winners never quit sure uh thank you Knicks fan patrol <laughs> lunas am i right what's going on lunas Freshly back from MSG, lost my voice, screaming, the deuce is loose. Winning where Brunson shot that bad is huge. Bench mob is so back. Shout out, Big Mish. Really do feel like if they go on any kind of a run this year, we're going to look back and remember this, this game. Like, I'll never forget Josh Hart's shot in game one his three in game one against cleveland i I really i know the knicks won that series in five games and they kind of like physically dominated the Cavs at the end of the day i i, I think that game one win was so big especially when you when you consider how the Cavs came back and like really wiped the floor with them in game two like if the Cavs had had figured out a way to get that game one like i don't know I don't know. Maybe the series doesn't turn out differently, but like I thought that I just I thought that series was decided with Game One when when you knew they would have Game Three coming back, the gardening Game Three, and the whole thing. I thought it kind of broke their spirit, and I, I I don't to be very clear, I, I don't think tonight broke Philadelphia's spirit. I think Philadelphia is a mentally tough team. Um, I think they got a I think they got a collection of guys like Batum, Lowry, Maxi seems. I, honestly mature beyond his years and like Embiid again Embiid catches a lot of shit Embiid it's more it's to me it's 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 physically where's it going to be physically um but just a big win big win and it's because of the bench Danny Small what's going on Danny how are you my friend Embiid's poster was a microcosm of his career ooh Otherworldly when he's on the floor, but he's not durable enough to win. Appreciate you, JM, and the KFS crew. Well, I appreciate you, Danny, and 
me and Danny go back a ways. Um, thanks for always chiming in and like being a part of the Substack and everything. I really appreciate it. Um, mm, man, I don't, I don't want to put any, put any kind of bigger thing on him. I mean, his career thus far has been, I mean, putting aside players that who, whose careers have just been completely and totally like either ended or sidetracked by injuries. So Bill Walton, Derek Rose, trying to think if I forget anybody. And those are the, those are the two MVPs. So those are the two guys that, that come to mind. Um, has there been another MVP caliber player whose career is more closely associated with like when you think of the player, you kind of you think of the injuries that they have that have befallen them more than Embiid. I don't don't think so. Maybe Kawhi. Kawhi never won an MVP, but Kawhi could have very easily won an MVP. Maybe Kawhi. That's about it. Uh, busy. Don't dance around the thing. The thing is big. Hashtag pause. Busy. I'm, I'm lost. So about an hour and a half ago, he pointed to the way that the team looks since January 27th and basically said since January oh. 27th, we don't play. We don't, we don't play like needing our stars to win. We win with the, the whole team that we taken over heat culture. And I don't know if you just like missed the troll of why he mentioned January 27th. Um, I, I did. I, I actually didn't, didn't even remember him mentioning that, but I'll, I'll take your word. For yes. It. I actually want to. He made it very clear to point out the day that a certain someone went out with a shoulder injury. Listen, they miss they miss him. <laughs> you think they could have used someone else's gravity tonight? <laughs> But yeah, but at Brunson the same being, time, but you know, you know, in fairness to Busy, and this is why I'm not going to kill Busy for this, even though I feel a certain obligation to stand up for the guy who just has surgery in his shoulder um, mm -hmm. and gives it everything when he's out out there on the court. Um, there is, they have to do it this way because they don't have any other option when Bronson's not. That doesn't have it. Um, I want to read a, a quote when I was at uh, SNY Studios to film with Dexter and, and CP the last time. I, I was poking my head around because there was a, a door uh, open. And I was like, yeah, let me, let me look around the studio a little bit. And it was a quote from Red Holzman uh, on the wall. On a good team, there are no superstars. There are great players who show they are great players by being able to play with others as a team. And Red Holzman's Knicks define that trait more than probably any other team in NBA history. This team has a lot of that. For sure. Thanks, Busy. Phrase Vader. What's going on, Phrase Vader? Team win. Big Mitchie. Josh has all the heart. We are showing people that a second scorer can come from several places. Let's fucking go Knicks. Let's fucking go Mets. Let's fucking go Rangers. Lots of lots of New York sports energy there. Um, Real quick to the to the let's go. Let's effing go New York. Right. So shout out to all the social media managers for all the teams in New York today. I'll even give the Yankees credit, the Mets credit, the Islanders, the Rangers. We're about to start their playoff runs. Mets and Yankees are like playing really good ball right now. You have the Knicks that obviously have their run that's about to start. The Jets and Giants at the NFL draft next week, but they're good vibes around both teams. And all of these teams wish the Knicks well with specific tweets, maybe a player that's come to a recent game. And it was very cool to see the teams that everybody cares about acknowledge the New York Knicks. There was one notable team that was silent today because nobody would have seen their tweet anyway. But oh, the it, was just, it was just, yes, John, I'm alluding to the fact that the Nets were the only team that didn't wish the Knicks luck today. Yeah, but they And it was pretty funny. Yeah. yeah, I know. It was really funny that everybody was like, 
oh yeah, we, we wish the Knicks luck and the one team across the borough, which obviously they weren't going to, they're division rivals, but you know, I don't I don't seem to it's just funny how very nobody cares about you over there because you're irrelevant now. I do think so it's it's interesting. The concept of needing a second scorer, like a second a traditional second star, second scorer. Um the Warriors won two championships like that. And I would even argue like look, Clay is an all time shooter. Wiggins was massive in that second playoff run. And Draymond's Draymond. I would argue that both of those teams had more by way of a second guy than these Knicks have in terms of someone who like can self create. Like that's the thing that we're talking about. It's not necessarily how many points they can put on the scoreboard. It's how many can they generate just by their own gravity. The Knicks have to work to generate the gravity. And that's why it's like, not to get on my Tibbs high horse, but like it's funny when people criticize, like, oh, he's an it's an archaic offense, this and that. He's doing this with one, 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 one guy who gravity who has gravity. He's also to look. I I'm not, I'm not getting into a Tibbs conversation. I think he's been really good this year. Maybe arguably the best in his career. Um, in fact, no argument. He's been the best in his career this year. I actually think you're making the right comp as far as talking about Golden State. Like you can win with like, and he's borrowing a lot of their concepts in the split actions, like the blind pig play that we're seeing him mix in a ton of like you can win without a second score when that first score is one of the greatest of all time, you know, which is what to your point, those two warriors championships you're talking about yeah, came to fruition. And then when it Steph played poorly, it took a game six clay to save them from losing in the conference finals. And then Steph played poorly in those final three games of the finals against the Cavs. Or even, you know, you, know, you if you want to go to the to the Dirk title, but like Terry was like Jason Terry doesn't get enough credit. Terry, Jason Terry was a big deal. Not to mention they had still Jason Kidd, who's one of the greatest point guards of all time. And then the only other one is is the Spurs, but that they they that was a decade of yeah muscle memory, you know. But this team, but you know what? They're not, I mean, look, that was the best, that's the most beautiful basketball I've ever seen played by a basketball team. This team is as, if you're ranking the top five teams of the in the league in terms of the holes greater than some of the parts, like how good their offense can look when they're going, like they don't need anyone to necessarily create. They're, the Knicks are up there. These role players got to keep hitting shots, and then we won't need a second score. H- hitting shots is important. Especially when you don't have Tim Duncan on your team. Uh, Jessica, what's going on, Jess? How are you? Holy crap. Coming back from Shabbat to a playoff win. one nothing. Let's freaking go. Thank you, John, for being you. Can't be anyone else, so I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you always for the kind comments and everything you do. Like Tibbs, you help create winning culture. <laughs> now you've gone and done it. I can't wait to go watch the game. Let's go, Knicks. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what the if the the proper I, I hope you enjoyed Shabbat. I hope you had a good Shabbat uh, to anybody out there who um, celebrated or, or uh, uh, commemorated. Um, I hope everybody it was it was good and and um, that when you watch the game, you enjoy it. Uh, you know, the results. So it's going to be a pretty good. It's going to be a pretty it, much less stressful watch than those of us who watched it live i'll say that thanks jess appreciate you as always uh jay will what's going on jay og should not be on maxi or mb let him roam okay i mean look i i think anytime you have a a guy like him i think that you want to mix it up i think you want to mix it up because the because if you if you only do one thing, you're giving the opposing coach a chance to game plan for that one thing. If you switch it up, it makes it harder for the team in the moment to respond. Because, like, yeah, you can practice for a lot of different things, but when you split switch it up in the moment, it, it makes it trickier. So, um, look, you have this guy who's capable of doing a lot of different things. Let him do a lot of different things, and then 
uh, when push comes to shove, you kind of figure out where you really want them and need them. Thanks, Jay Will. OG team, damn, you still live, LOL. We just crossed the three-hour mark. I have no idea if anybody's still watching, uh, but thanks to anybody who is. There are 3,300 people still watching. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. 858 on YouTube, 2,400 on Twitter.com, or X.com. X. Now. His mama named him Twitter. I'm calling him Twitter. His mama changed his name to X. Yeah, and I'm gonna write something tonight. I don't know. I don't know how much I'm gonna write tonight. I'm gonna write something tonight. Uh, Kevin with another one, Mister Danishevsky. Underrated what if in Nick's history? Oh my god! Only Kevin, only Kevin with the third to last super chat of the night starts off with an underrated what if in Nick's history. I can't wait to read this. I wonder what a Mitch, Mitch, and a healthy KP. Uh, it's actually a pretty good one. Would have been. I'm okay with the, this reality. Mitch was unreal on Embiid tonight. Um, so let's just be clear here. You want to imagine a reality in which Kristaps Porzingis does not uh, rup rupture his AC, whatever the hell he did. He doesn't crumple over in a heap. Um, and then he starts off the next season. He's at the four. Mitch is at the five. That's no Noah Vonley. It's a big loss, Kev. It's a big loss. No. Um, who the hell else was on that team? I need to bring Andrew up here. It's too late. Um, that would be that Tim Hardaway Trey, Jr. Yeah, it was Tim Hardaway Jr., Trey Burke, Fre Frank Nilkina, Lance Thomas. Oh my God. Kevin Knox, Kevin rookie Knox. Year. I mean, there was, no, that, 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 there was nobody on that team. Mm -hmm. Eventually, a Dennis Smith Jr. made some appearances. <laughs> Obviously, well, no, because, but, of, but that was because of the trade. Yeah, because of the, the trade. trade. Was Dot on the team then too? Damian Dotson? Of course he was. Um, naming players that were on the team. That's that's Mario Hazonia. I'm just asking questions. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't think Hazonia was. Moutier. Emmanuel no. Moutier was on the team. Yeah, because he came over the year before at the deadline. During the trade deadline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Said, so we're going to so get you right. We're going to get you right. We're going to get you right. Yeah, you, you did wonders there. Oh. Um, Alonzo Trier. He was already on the team. Yes, mm -hmm. he was. Okay. So I, I think what Kevin's getting at is like, would what those guys showed together have been the foundation? Would, would it have been so like, oh man, they, they really have something here. This is a real twin towers that could work. Would it have basically like shifted the organization's thinking to whatever extent? I think, to, to, to say that is like a, it's cute but it's like the the had had KP not gotten hurt is like doing 85% of the lifting there and this is like the other 15% so I don't really know how to but I think they would have been good to go good seeing you tonight Kev good what if J vertical what's up J vertical what's up John I noticed early on that Philly made it a priority to contest JB from behind. Yep. Yep. Mentioned that before. Talked about it. Good job by you pointing it out uh, to affect his shot more. And it worked. I think matching maxi minutes in the second half with Deuce could be huge. Let's go next. Um, yeah. I mean, look, the more you're, you're going to get, you're going to get max. I, I mean, to me, after this game, I guess my my biggest question that was not a question before the series started was, is Deuce going to just close games? Which means, I mean, really, am I asking, what am I asking? I'm asking, is, is Dante Vincenzo not going to close games? Because, like, Bronson's going to play. Hart's going to play. OG's going to play. Ascender's going to play. So this is this is really a deuce first Dante thing, and I wonder how much of it will be determined by okay, is Dante hot from three? Is Deuce hot from three? How awesome is I mean, but that's the thing. Deuce is always awesome on defense. You know, is Dante more holding his own on defense? You know, I I don't I, I will say it right now, I don't envy Tom Thibodeau with this decision. I do not envy Tom Thibodeau with the decision at all. 
is it possible maybe Hart is the one to to get the seat if he feels like he needs Deuce in there to guard Maxi in the fourth quarter? Maybe. I guess. I don't I don't let's see it. it. Should be something worth watching. Um oh wait, hold on. There was something else from that. Uh the 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 the, the, the Brunson from behind. Yeah, it's like you wonder why more teams don't get him from behind. Right? I, maybe it's their length. Maybe it's just he was kind of not fully with it tonight. Like It was strange. It was odd to see. And yet when you saw it, it's like, oh, why, why does this happen more often? Thanks, Jay Vertical. Um, got six more. Alex, glad I didn't take that precious minute at the four bet. I would have made that in a heartbeat. I, I, I had a good feeling about that one. That precious was not going to play minutes at the four. Danny Small with another one. Has anyone made the 2004 Pistons comp to these Knicks? Uh, only busy about 18 times over the last couple of years. JB's better than Chauncey. That's, that's a that's Hall of Famer Chauncey Billis. Did he? I think he made it this year, right? If he didn't make it this year, he's going to make it soon. Um, but other than that, it's great. It's a great team, players that fit and defend. The presence of Rashid Wallace, well, two things. One, you want to talk about a team of an era? Has there ever been a team that more fit an era of the NBA that was that that era was that era because of the rules at the time, uh, because of like where the skill level was of the players, I think. Um there's no ne- I don't think there's ever been a team of an era like those Pistons were where, you know, you could win 73 to 68 and it wasn't crazy. So the fact that they were so gifted defensively and they did, they could do just enough on offense. Like that was enough. And I think it's tougher to pull that sort of, thing off now where the offense is uh, the second greatest offensive rating average offensive rating season in league history with the exception of one year back in the 60s when Wilt scored 50 points a year or 50 points a game Uh, because typically you need stars to score or at least generate offense and get the dominoes falling in terms of how they play together in terms of the camaraderie, in terms of the just how the pieces fit, like all that stuff, I'm with you. But in terms of like, you know, overcoming lack of quote unquote star talent, where so, such that the whole being great in the sum of the parts is enough, it's I think it was easier to do back then because of the nature of the sport then versus now. And the other thing I just feel the need to say is Rashid Wallace is one of the, I don't know one of the 40 or 50 most gifted players to come along in the last 30 years. Um, Duke could do anything. And he, you know, we got down to business on that Pistons team. You know, I know he didn't make all-star teams. I know he's not making the Hall of Fame or anything like that, but that dude was like, you know, that dude could do anything on both heads of the floor. Uh, busy. Why does it have to be a scared reaction to change the lineup? Why can't it be rewarding a guy for playing well? It's a fair question. Because I think you have a formula that works. I think you have a formula that works, and I think there's a reason it works. And I think to assume that because the Sixers present some unique challenges that your formula could no longer work is an assumption that I am not willing to make. Um, I think Dante DiVincenzo has been such a difference-making shooter and offensive player in general that he has earned the chance to continue to start games. He had a not a great night defensively. As an aside, as an aside, I meant what I said before about keeping Deuce as the spark off the bench. I think that is important. I think his defensive energy changes the game when he gets in. I 
I don't think what you're saying is crazy. I wouldn't do it. I just, I think there is a value, there is an inherent value in stability. And that guys know that you have their back absent exigent circumstances. Now, could you argue this is the playoffs? This isn't about having anybody's back? Yes. I think Dante has earned the right to continue to start. And with the with the potential for a pivot. Because that's the other that's the other side here to your to which this supports your argument. If we keep talking about Nick's culture and and we believe it, then theoretically Tom Thibodeau going to Dante DiVincenzo and saying, you know what, you're coming off the bench tonight, that he'd be fine with that. I don't think it's time for that. I wouldn't do it. But you're not you're not crazy, Bishop. Well said. So there's two more super chats. I just figured out I'll. I'll... I'll join you for these if if that's okay. Fred Katz. Who's that? From the athletic. Friend of the pod. Comes here often. Makes horrible draft picks. Good puns though. Never move. Never stops moving. I heard he is he a podcaster? Yes. Hosts a show called Cats and Shoot. Nicely produced. I don't know. I feel like I should be more familiar with this person. Did Philly just win the series? It's such an odd comment to make. I don't know. I don't even know what that doesn't make any sense. I guess it, it doesn't. Could there be something that you could share that would add more context if you're if you're interested in sharing? I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, OK. No, no references to I mean, could Fred be referring to maybe a, a tip he got or a message he got from I someone? W- listen, I'm not going to be one to get on here and and like reveal Fred's sources. If Fred gets uh, that okay. from people that make him think one thing or another about the series, that's for Fred. If he wants to share that sort of knowledge, that's up to Fred. OK, Fred, you have to send in another chat to get get it out of him. Andrew Claudio, yes, Fred Katz and Bede in the first quarter already planning. Ended in the ended in the first quarter. The series ended in the oh, first the quarter. series ended in. I thought it said Embiid ended in the first quarter already planning draft content. Um, yeah, it's just a really strange way to end the end the live stream. I, I wonder guys, what what could be being referenced by these two super chats between Fred Katz and one Andrew Claudio. You know, uh, I think the. Maybe the Henny's getting to you. Uh, has to be. Shout out Hennessy. Um, hold on, I'm doing the math right now. Uh, final score was 111 to 104, which means the Knicks outscored the Sixers 104 to 87. After I got a text from my friend that the series is over seven minutes in. Okay, just making sure I got my math right. Thank you, Fred Katz. Giovanni Mastretta. Philadelphia with or without Embiid. I don't give a fuck. We have 10 guys that can carry each other, believe in each other, and refuse to quit. GMAC for Prez. Hashtag Nixon 5. Let's freaking go, Nixon. This is your burner, isn't it? It's a 5, Giovanni. How many, right. burners, how many burners do you have? All right, listen, if this is my burner, Jessica's yours. Jessica's like an esteemed member of our community. To accuse her of being a burner... Sir, fair, fine, busy, busy's yours, or get, no, uh, busy's, Dom, busy's, well, that's true. Busy's, busy's not your burner. The busy would be my burner. Then any bad things I want to say about John or arguments I want to make. You know who's my burner? Me. And no. if I didn't see his face and like see his personage speak on our town mm-hmm. halls regularly, I would think so. It was Haitian. Haitian Ferg's my burner. Uh, I was gonna go Kev, either Kev or Dom or yeah, Kev, 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 Kev is his own. Kev's one of one. Kev's a character. We were giving, we were giving him a lot of a lot of jokes tonight at the at the watch along at the town town hall, not the town hall, the watch party. D squared. Uh, all right. Anything else? No, that's it. We have reached the finish Christ. line. Got off early here. Uh, 
So uh, thank you, Andrew, for joining the party. Uh, thank you for everyone at T-Squared Social who made the night extra special. Thank you, everybody who came on here and um, generously contributed to uh, what we're trying to do here. And also just gave me a way to enjoy and, and relish in this victory, which is one of the one of the biggest Nick wins um, since the 90s. I don't like we'll see what happens this playoffs. Um, I don't think that's an overstatement to say right now uh, that this is one of the biggest Knicks wins since the 90s. Uh, it is. They needed to get this win i really in my gut i feel they needed to get this win they could not lose this game and feel great about winning this series um all right that's it uh thanks for tuning in please like the video subscribe to our channel anybody who's maybe new watching and doesn't subscribe to the youtube channel just subscribe to the youtube channel what's it gonna, uh, what's it gonna cost you nothing it's free <laughs> subscribe and uh, yeah, uh, like the uh, or subscribe to the podcast, give, leave a five star rating review, subscribe to the next film school newsletter if you'd like. Um, I'm going to try to write something now. Probably not a full newsletter. I'm, I, I need to get some sleep. I'm tired. Um, and we are going to have something else coming your way. Soon, I got to text you after the. The well, text you, talk to you after we're done because it's Passover starting tomorrow, and let's just say the usual people I go to for the host of show with John are celebrating said thing. So, uh, I think that, that to me sounds like Robert Cross's bat signal. Don't you dare, first of all, and um, we'll figure it out. We will have content coming your way tomorrow at some point. Um, hold on. Apparently we missed a super chat here. What are we doing? I believe this is one. Did we not read this? Oh yeah. No, we didn't read this. Freeway hustle 21. Love it when the Knicks are winning so that we don't have to hear Dora's talk. She's such a Knicks hater. It's nauseating. She stays so quiet when they are winning. Jeez. That's a harsh way to end it. Um, I love the hall of famer Dora's book. I don't I would not characterize anything I heard tonight as and I was listening to the ESPN broadcast. Uh, I would not characterize anything I heard tonight as Nick's hating. She is a Knicks fan, actually. Like whether you believe her or you don't believe her, she's grew up a Knicks fan. Um, I thought she was praising Philly a lot, but I also thought that Philly like whenever she was saying nice things about Philly, I thought they were warranted. Um, I also think she said a lot of nice things about New York. Um, so I, I, I don't share in that opinion, Freeway Hustler, all the respect. Um, and Doris Burke, if you're listening, uh, feel free to come on this full school pod podcast and, uh, talk about whatever you'd like. So now you're going to go to someone on the ESPN crew that, and then invite them on your podcast. If only you lived near one that you run into all the time. What do you want me to do? Hi, he was JJ. I, for me. I'm the host of a number one Knicks podcast that doesn't have Josh Jalen Brunson on. I also host and I also read a newsletter that has thousands of subscribers. As he's walking his kid to school, I'm going to stop him and say all that. Yes. JJ, big fan. I host a Knicks podcast. Can we have you on sometime? I respect what you do. And you know what I would do if I were him? What? I'd be like, fuck you. I'm walking my kid to school. Fuck off. Like, don't bother that's, me. That's you because you assume that he would do that. No, because he's a busy man and he has things to do. Like come on our podcast. John, the worst thing he could do is say no. All right. How about this? If anybody watching this right now or anybody watching this tomorrow or anybody watching this at any point in time knows JJ Reddick, please let JJ Reddick know that two people here on the Knicks Film School podcast think the highest of him, which is true, and would love to have a chat with him on the podcast. And if you'd like to come on, the invite is open. And um, and he has to go three blocks to John's house and we could do it in person. It's more than three blocks. It's it's shorter than like it's a it's um, it's a short like, <laughs> it's, it's a short walk it would have been three blocks from my old apartment but it's a little bit longer everybody right. tweet at jj go on the Knicks film school podcast 
and talk to John. Yeah, Mack. Get, get it trending. Talk to your neighbor, John. Mack. Listen, CP's been making this movement with Perk, and it's apparently going to work. <laughs> Shout out to CP. I'm going out next. Why are we getting Kendrick Perkins? <laughs> well, we're never doing that. I probably because the no, point is, point is, I think uh, that we could start a movement of our own. Get JJ on KFS. There's your hashtag. JJ on KFS. Why not now? Yeah, Why, not now JJ? Why, not Why not now, JJ? Why not now? It is. Man. One more, uh, by the way. What? One more. So, oh, Santiago. Barrio Canal. I don't know what the dom- denomination that is. <laughs> um, thank you. Just a super chat to appreciate all the effort and content that you guys put out. It's truly a pleasure. Long time from Paraguay. Cheers. Thank you, man. Um, I, there's so many things that make me so happy getting or having the privilege to do this. Just hearing from Knicks fans around the world is. Um, it's so special because it one, it reinforces that this is a really special fan base that we have fans everywhere, which is not something that more than like a couple of teams can say. Um, but more than that, that like, and I hear this from people where it's like, you, you know, KFS has helped me like stay connected. There are so many different ways that you could stay connected with the Knicks. Like there's a million and one content creators and they're all awesome. And the fact that you um, seem to at least spend some of your time uh, with us and, you know, that hopefully helps you stay connected to the team and makes you feel like you're like in New York or whatever. That's really special. So um, thank you for the generous contribution. And uh, here's to a nice series victory. And on that note, I think we're done, right? Yes. 3,300 people still watching live. Jesus Christ. Fuck you doing? All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.